Come in. Give me a couple, couple of minutes at the beginning while we let people filter in. And slide on in, because today we're gonna, well, we're gonna have another stream where I, a vegan, a vegan of around 14 years, I'm gonna answer questions from uh, the meat-eating audience. Actually, we put the poll up now, and let's see. Um, are you vegan? Let's have a look who's going to be here today. Yes, I'm vegan. No, I'm not vegan. All right, the poll is up. And then that's good because then we can see who's who. And these uh, these streams are always very interesting. So if you're just joining, do stick around because these usually, these usually are very interesting streams. You usually get a lot of people who aren't vegan and they ask a lot of questions. And that's why I'm doing them because... Uh, the majority of the people that come here, actually, in these, this stream, when I do it uh, this way, with the mobile streaming, they're not actually vegan. So it's been quite an interesting uh, interesting way of doing things. What's going on, guys? Hey, Kevin, mate, a friendo. How's it going? And don't use. How are you doing? How's everybody doing? Hey, hello, Jokic. How are you doing? Oh, great. You got a Discord notification. Well, yeah, that sometimes works. It's always a good thing. And... Uh, Cool, welcome guys, JP and Julia in the house. How's it all going, everybody? How are you all doing? Hope you're doing well this, uh, what day is it? Wednesday afternoon. And uh, yeah, we're here. We're here to talk about veganism. We're gonna talk about veganism to people that have lots of questions about veganism, who tend to find the stream usually in the, yeah, about, it can be like sometimes 30 minutes or so, and they start flocking in. And uh, then they'll ask a lot of questions about why, why we're vegan and what, what's our deal. And they ask stuff about, they have all sorts of questions and it's actually really interesting. So I'm actually, um, I've actually really been enjoying doing these streams. Trolls are bad. Ask us a, that's a cool question. What are your favorite vegan foods? My favorite vegan foods, well, I'm a big fan of Mexican food. Or I suppose you could call it Tex-Mex. I like burritos. So I make vegan burritos very easy. Burritos are vegan apart from the protein sauce uh, and, and the cheese. You can get vegan cheese or you could just do no cheese. I prefer vegan cheese. There is sour cream as well. You can get vegan sour cream or you can just skip the sour cream. And as for the protein, you can uh, skip the whatever, the chicken or the beef, whatever it is, the animal flesh. And you could just put more beans in there or some tofu in there or some seitan in there, which is made from gluten. But it's, it's really good. It's got a really meaty vibe to it when you prepare it properly. Um, tempeh can also be done in a burrito. But if you're really not into kind of meat substitutes and you just want like a nice fresh plant-based burrito, then um, yeah, just more beans. And uh, your beans and rice and the burrito, those can be um, your main kind of bulk of it. And then the usual vegetables, the salad, the rest of the stuff, and um, some guacamole always goes down really well. Some spicy sauce, if you're into that. Fried mushrooms, fried peppers. Yeah, big fan of a big fan of a of a plant based, like a whole food plant based burrito, as well as as well as my meat substitutes and cheese, vegan cheese, vegan meat, vegan sour cream. I love all that too. Depends on the mood. You know what I mean. Good question. Good question. Though. What's up, Dave? What's up, Satan inside? How are you guys doing? So yeah, for those who are just joining, I mean, we can keep the poll up, actually. Let's have a look at the poll results. So currently, oh, we do have some people who aren't vegan. 30% of you here are, are not vegan. So that's interesting, guys. Uh, for, for the people here who aren't vegan, start asking some questions. I'll do my best to answer you. And guys, uh, if you want me to answer a question today, it, it's a lot easier for me. You make my life a lot easier if you can just put my name, David Rams, and, and then your question. Uh, because that way, I don't know if you know this, but YouTube will show your question to me with a highlighted orange around it. So I can actually see right away, um, I can see right away my name and I can spot your question, you see. So that's the best way of doing it, guys. So if you if you uh, want me to see your question, that's how you got to do it for me. That way, I will probably not miss it. Um, try to get my best to get do my best to get around and answer it. James Hasley is in the house. What is going on, James? How's it going, mate? James is a good friend of mine. He's also the director of the animal rights organization We the Free, who I highly recommend you guys go and check out. All right. Mohammed saying, uh, glad to see you've made gains. It really helps the cause when our people look good and helps in conversations. Ah, cheers, mate. Yeah, I've, I have been working hard at that. It's been, um, it's been, a, it's been a journey. <laughs> I gotta admit, like right now, 
journey is uh is not is not too strong. I definitely need to get back to the gym, guys. I'll be honest with you. I've been slacking, but you know, I hopefully won't lose too many gains <laughs> in the meantime. It kind of sucks. That's that that's the love hate about about building muscle is once you've built it, you don't want to lose it. But unfortunately, uh, sometimes life gets in the way, right? And you can't get to the gym or you don't eat as well. And then you start losing it. You're like, oh my God, I've worked so hard for these gains. But yeah, rough. Can be rough. I'll do my best today to answer the trolls too. Because I think uh, sometimes it's, uh, well, it's good entertainment, isn't it? To see, to see me answering trolls. By the way, guys, when I'm looking down like this, I'm reading the chat. Because the chat up on the screen is too small. So I've got it loaded up on my laptop, okay? So I am paying attention to you guys and I'm looking at the chat, okay? Remember, guys, put my name if you have something to say. Eagles and cycling. Would it be cool if you hook up with James Aspie and have a chat? Uh, I agree. Uh, we, we're going to set that up at some point for sure. Uh, Cheese is asking, who do I think is a better fighter, Jake Paul or Mike Tyson? Um, it's irrelevant to veganism. I usually don't. I'm here to talk about veganism and animals, but I'll tell you what. I'll give you an answer because it's an easy question to answer. Of course, it's Mike Tyson. Let's, let's just be real about this. <laughs> Let's just be real about this. And I and I hope Tyson kicks that little douchebag's ass, to be totally honest with you. But no, we're here to talk about vegan stuff, guys. Ask, ask questions to do with veganism, please. And we can uh, I can ask answer them for you. Because I can see already that 33% of you are not vegans. Tell me, why aren't you vegan? And uh, what do you have against veganism? Do you have anything against veganism? Do you have something against vegans? Something you want to vent to me right now? Put it in the chat. Put my name and put it in the chat, okay? And uh, we'll, 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 I'll answer them if I spot them. I saw one guy earlier on said something about buying local animal products or something like that. You know, the, the, the distance that a farm is away from you doesn't mean that it's better or worse for animals, right? Factory farms are all local to somebody, right? The, the worst places in the world for animals are all somebody's local farm or local slaughterhouse. So the idea of like, oh, buying local doesn't, it's just a buzzword. It's just nonsense. It's just what they use to try and make you think something is good, you know? Um, so don't fall for that crap, guys. Yeah, Ramon, I am going to keep working out. Don't you worry. I'm back at the gym tomorrow, okay? I'm going to bring it back. Um, I miss, I had a bigger shoulders before. I miss them. They've kind of, I mean, actually, they still look all right, to be honest with you. You kind of see that they're still okay, but I think they were a little bit bigger before. I'm going to do, I'm going to bring it back. Don't worry, I'm not quitting. Jelly says, I ain't a vegan. That's Jelly. Well, this is the right place for you to be then to talk about veganism. Let us know what um, questions you have about, about veganism and um, why, why are you not a vegan? Are you somebody, do you love animals? Do you care about animals? Are you against animal cruelty? Though there's a very good reason to be a vegan if you're against animal cruelty, because when you're against animal cruelty, you shouldn't pay for animal cruelty, right? And that's what uh, being a vegan is. We don't pay for animal cruelty. James Attersley says, it's not really a question for you, David, but I'm always curious, what's stopping vegans from getting active and raising awareness? Well, maybe the vegans in here, you guys could maybe answer that question. Um, what's stopping you from getting active and speaking up? Uh... Conscious Machine is saying, David, I cannot replenish myself with rice, beans, and lentils. After real work and labor, I need beef to feel good. And local means less gas spent, fresher food, not a major slaughterhouse. And then he says, you pretentious dick. Uh, okay, Conscious Machine, let's uh, let's break this down then. After real work and labor, I need beef to feel good. Um, what do you mean? So you do manual labor, is that what you're saying? Okay, so then how do you explain the bodybuilders who literally spend two hours a day, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, two hours a day in the gym, Excuse me, just can just, me just lubricate my throat a little bit. Two hours a day in the gym, working extremely hard, and then onto like their day jobs, and they're able to do this eating plant-based. How do you explain that then if uh, if they just simply need beef? Um, now, what you're, what you're describing here is your preference, mate. Your preference is beef because that's what you like, makes you feel good or whatever. And uh, that's not a good enough reason to stab an animal in the throat. Uh, you can replenish yourself with rice, beans, and lentils because as if you if you would check nutrition and look into the science behind nutrition, you'd see that rice, beans, and lentils has protein and carbs and there's fat and there's many, many other things you could eat to replenish your body after a hard day's work that don't come from stabbing animals in the throat. Now, obviously, you don't want to do that, which is why you're making this excuse and calling me a dick. Um, and now you're making another excuse saying animals eat animals too. See, it was never about the nutrition for you. It was only about your preferences and what you like and dislike. So don't pretend it's anything to do with some sciencey nutrition stuff when you don't know what you're talking about, first off. Second of all, you're now saying animals eat animals too. Yes, animals do lots of things to each other. They do horrible things to each other out in the wild. 
but that doesn't mean you should do those things too, do you? You don't copy off of uh, off of other animals, do you, to justify what you do? Other animals do all sorts, mate. Do you want me to give you some examples? Some animals eat their own young. Do you eat your own babies? Do you eat other people's babies? Some animals do that. Some animals crawl into the nests of birds and eat the embryos of birds, like fertilized eggs that have little birds inside. Some lizards go up there and eat those in, in the nest, right? So do you do that? Do you go to pregnant women and eat their babies while they're in the womb because some lizards do that to birds? Come on now, it's a, very, it's a bit silly, isn't it? So no, you, you shouldn't base your life decisions on what other animals do. <laughs> and, and again, um, oh, I, I calls me a dick. Um, a classic liberal dick. <laughs> Mate, you know nothing about my politics. You know absolutely nothing about my politics and what I believe in. And actually, if you want to learn what I believe in and where I align on a lot of topics, you can go to my second channel, The Rams Den, where I've actually been criticized by many people who are liberals because I don't take the same position as a lot of vegans. And I actually have other opinions that a lot of vegans don't like because you are right and that most vegans do fall on this kind of far left side of the spectrum. And I call out some of the nonsense that comes up from people on the political far left. Like I actually find some of the things very silly and ridiculous. And I cop, I cop shit for talking about that and for calling it out and pointing out that it doesn't make sense. So you know absolutely nothing about me, yet you're getting upset and saying that I'm a liberal dick because I don't think it's okay to abuse animals. See, that's the beauty of being against animal abuse is that whether you're a right winger or a left winger or whether you vote for Biden or Trump, it doesn't matter. Anybody can be against animal abuse. Anyone in the world can be against animal abuse. And there's absolutely no need for it to be aligned with any political ideology. It's simple. It's I don't need to stab animals in the throat for my nutrition. So I'm not going to do that because I don't believe that it's OK to abuse innocent animals who are totally weak and defenseless. Okay, they, didn't, they, they can't defend themselves against me whatsoever. I think it's wrong to take advantage of their weakness and hurt them and kill them for a sandwich. That belief, you can hold that belief as a Christian, as a Muslim, as a Jew. Uh, you could hold that belief if you, again, vote for someone like Trump or vote for someone like Biden. You could hold that belief no matter where you are in the world. Everyone can hold that belief and carry on with whatever else they were doing. Okay, so... There you go. There's the answer to your question. I'm moving on from you because you're a time waster. But if you have something more interesting to say from here, then you please put it put it in the chat. And if it's interesting, I might respond to it again. If it's not interesting, I'm done with you. But um, anyway, cheers for getting involved, though, by the way. Bit silly, though, wasn't it? Bit silly. Um, here we go. Icy Pasta Sauce says, yeah, you guys are fucking hopeless. Go on then, Icy Pasta Sauce. Tell us, why are we hopeless? So I'll, I'll wait for your uh, your response. And uh, you can make sure to put my name, okay, so I can see your response quickly and easily. And I can I can reply to you directly. So what's been exaggerated and uh, what's hopeless exactly? Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this, shall we? Um, he says, thanks for your welcoming attitude. Bro, you called me a dick twice. <laughs> like, you deserve to be treated like that. You don't come into a live stream and start insulting somebody because they defend animals. If you want to talk to me, like a normal human being, I can talk to you like a normal human being. You call me a dick twice, then I'm going to tell you I'm, I'm done with you. I didn't even call you any names, mate. So, you know, don't be so soft. Get a thicker skin, yeah? Um, Uncle Buzz says, why are you vegan? So I'm vegan, mate, because I learned a, a long time ago, about 14 years ago, that I can live my life, I can get all my nutrition without paying anybody to stab animals, to mutilate animals, to, to, you know, do all these horrible things to them. Because let me explain, people are saying I'm exaggerating, okay? So every single animal that you eat, every single piece of meat that you eat, okay, that animal was stabbed in the neck, okay? The, every single one of them has a knife shoved in their throat and ripped, and then they're bled out, okay? Now, before that happens, they'll be shot in the head, they'll be dunked in electrified water, or they'll be gassed, okay? in a gas chamber with CO2 gas. These are the three main methods that they use to kill cows, chickens, and pigs, okay? And this is also dairy cows, okay? So dairy cows, as soon as they're done with them, they go to the slaughterhouse and the same thing happens to them. And this is also done with egg chickens, egg-laying chickens, egg-laying hens. When they're done with them, they'll send them to the slaughterhouse, do the exact same thing to them, okay? And 
All of this is happening all over the world, constantly, every single day, and most people are paying for it. They're literally funding it without even knowing how it's all done and how it works and how all these horrors are being done to animals. Most people are against animal cruelty, but yet they're funding it. And I realized that I'm against animal cruelty, but I was funding it. So that's why I'm now a vegan, and that's why I'm here talking to you so you can learn about this and so that you could also be a vegan. People are asking me where I get this information from. I get this information. Well, first of all, if you want to find this information, you can go and start looking into the farming YouTubers, slaughterhouses. These places open the, the, the material, as in the equipment. You can go and look up the equipment sales pages and they explain how the equipment works, okay? This is how it's done. Everything I just explained to you is standard practice. You could go and get some training in animal agriculture. Right now, you could go sign up to a university course or a college course and they will teach all of this to you. This is not, it is It is hidden from the general public, but it's not hidden if you want to go and learn it. You can go and find this information. And the footage you can get is out there as well. So investigators have gone inside these places undercover and they filmed all of these things happening. For example, the gas chambers I just mentioned, there has been a recent UK investigation done by a guy called Joey Carbstrong. He put secret cameras inside a gas chamber in a pig slaughterhouse and filmed it. You can get that right here on YouTube right now. Just go on YouTube, search UK pig gas chamber. It's right there, okay? So that's where you can see that. Uh, you could go watch a documentary called Dominion. That's Dominion. It's right here on YouTube. It's free to watch where they exposed everything I just said. Everything I just said is right there for you, right on YouTube for free. You can watch it right now and see it all right there, okay? That's how, this is how it works, okay? So you're asking me where I got this information from. Firstly, yeah, it's right there for you to get. It's not hidden for you from you if you look for it. It's only hidden from you when you're at the supermarket because the supermarket will never tell you what you're funding, okay? But you, you can go and find it. You can go and find what you're funding and find that information yourself. I'm here to connect you to it. I'm not the gospel here, okay? I'm not the guy who knows everything. I'm not, I'm not vegan Jesus. That's not me. All I'm here for is to get you thinking and to connect you with this information. So I'm telling you, go and look into it, right? You don't need to believe me. It's fine. Go and look into it yourself. I'm just I'm just the messenger here. As I said, I'm no vegan Jesus, all right? So keep that in mind, guys. And I'm not trying to be a vegan Jesus, yeah? Um, I'm a firm believer that everyone has the right to opinion and speaking on it. But when you're forcing it onto others like this, it makes you seem like a dick. I agree with the one guy that called you <laughs> faux fifth. How is me doing a YouTube short live stream forcing anything on you? You clicked this and you're now staying here, bro. There's no force. As I just said to you, all I can do is connect you to the right places to go and view the information yourself. If you continue to abuse animals after that, that's on you. And frankly, you're a pretty disgusting human being if after the research of all of this and after you know you can live without abusing animals, you choose to abuse animals, that's on you. You have to live with that. That's on your conscience, right? But I don't see how this is forceful in any way. That's a very, si very silly thing to say. It's my YouTube channel under my name where I talk about veganism, okay? I'm here literally to have conversations and try to convince people to do the right thing. If you see that as forceful, I don't believe you've ever been forced to do anything in your entire life then, if you think this is forceful. You, you, honestly, you need to grow up, man. Come on. You need to grow up, get a thicker skin, and stop being so soft. We forgot a super chat. Hey, thank you so much for the super chat, Anthony, who says, finally, a live I can watch while I eat my steak. Well, why'd you send me $5 to say that? That's really funny. I appreciate your $5. I'm going to take that $5 and I'm going to put it into my work uh, for animals. So, you know, please, if you want to keep on sending more and more money like that, then that's great. That's great for me. I appreciate it. Um, and by the way, um, as an FYI, it's really, I find it really interesting how people put things like, uh, I eat my steak, you know, it's, there's a, there's, there's like an element of, um, I don't know how you would put it. There's like an element of kind of, it's like an obsession because what I find really interesting is, is the idea that when people say like, oh, I'm eating my steak, I'm eating my bacon, I'm eating my meat and things like that. It, it, they say it as if it's a form of protest, like as against the vegans, like, oh yeah, that's going to really upset the vegan, right? Because I'm eating my steak kind of thing, my bacon or whatever. It, it's it's funny that you think doing something that the majority of the world does every single day is a protest. You got to realize that you're not protesting the vegan. You're not protesting me right now. That's not what's happening. 
all you're doing is something that everybody does, but you think doing it in front of a vegan makes it any different or some form of protest. It doesn't. It just makes you look very silly. You see, because obviously all vegans, all we care about, we care about animals. And that's all we're doing this for. Um, any other kind of intention you put on vegans, you say, oh, there's someone's just put a comment here saying, uh, what was it? One second, let me go back. Uh, something like you seem, someone just tried to put another insult up and it's really interesting. Hold up. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I lost it. Something like you seem smug or something like that. You seem blah, blah, blah. I don't know what it was. Just saying something about me. By the way, guys, if you want to say something about me, put my name, David Rams. Otherwise, it's hard for me to find it. Okay, I can't find it if you don't put my name there. But anyway, someone was saying something like, oh, you seem smug. You seem fully yourself, blah, 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 blah. This is all projection, guys. I'm literally sat here. I'm answering trolls and I'm giving them a bit of, bit of hard time because they're being silly. Um, I'm explaining animal agriculture to you and I'm answering your questions. Any kind of other thing you put on me, like, oh, you seem really smug, you seem really... This is all projection. It's just projection. It's you, You're upset because what I'm saying is true and you know it's true and you feel guilty. And then you're attacking me because I made you feel bad. That's on you, man. And, and, and if, if... Yeah, that's it. Because at the end of the day, I'm here... I'm here humbly speaking to you. I don't think I'm better, better than you apart from on animals. I, I know I'm better for you when it comes to animals because vegans are better for animals, right? Just the same way if you're any of you guys here are a maths teacher, you'll be better than me at maths. That's not being full of yourself or arrogance or anything. It's just a fact. But as humans, you're a human, I'm a human. I don't think that you're evil or, or are you, you, you know, you're an evil person. Good people do bad things. That's why I'm here, because I think most people are good people and they do bad things. And I'm trying to reach good people who want to learn about these bad things so they can change them. OK, I'm here about, you know, I'm here trying. This is more uh, humble than anything. Yeah, I'm just a messenger here. I'm a humble messenger. So, you know, don't get worked up with me. Get worked up with the facts. All right. Because the facts are disgusting. You should be disgusted and you should be annoyed by them um, because they're terrible. And you can do something about that. Um, Neil, thank you, mate. Says everyone go watch Pignorant. I agree, Neil. Everyone should go watch Pignorant. Pignorant's a new documentary for everybody who's here from the UK. Pignorant's a new documentary. It's available on Amazon Prime. And also it's available on Amazon Prime US. And now it's completely free on another app called uh, Tubi, I think it was called. Let me know if it's uh, if it's Tubi, guys. If you're in the US, Australia or Canada, it's a completely free documentary now that you can access through Tubi. I highly recommend you guys go watch it. Um... And uh, yeah, called Pignorance, guys, Pignorance. And there was one more super chat. Oh, yeah, we got another super chat from, from someone called my YouTube account. who says, I am eating steak in my V8 Audi right now. <laughs> so so that's funny because, listen, mate, because one, you clearly don't have a V8 Audi. Um, so that that's, you know, that's funny. And two, you're definitely not eating steak in the V8 Audi because uh, you don't have a V8 Audi, clearly. Um because I, I don't know, I don't think anyone with a with a nice car or or, or that much money would uh, would sit around and saying silly things in a YouTube stream. Also, also, anyone who could afford a nice car wouldn't send a super chat of two dollars because you could probably afford a lot more and you would probably pay a lot more to make a bigger deal, make a bigger a bigger statement. But no, you're probably just some um, basement dweller trying to upset a vegan. But I'll take your money anyway. Appreciate it. <laughs> I've never I've never actually had anyone pay money to be a douchebag on my streams before. So guys, if this is a new theme, keep it up. I all day. You can come at me all day. It's all good. All good for me. And send me more, send me more money. Send me more super chats telling me you're eating steak. Totally fine by me. Or should I yeah, Dillion said I should flip out maybe, because then you'll you'll do it more. Is that what you'd like? Would you like me to lose my shit, shout, take my shirt off, punch something. Would that make you send more super chats? <laughs> yeah, go on then, my YouTube account. Donate $100. Show us all you got the money. I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all that you got that much money. You can prove us wrong. Tell you what, if you send $100 right now, I will eat my words. I will take it back and I'll say you are most likely in your V8 and you're most likely eating a tortured animal. I will, I will admit that you are most likely doing those things. No problem at all if you send over that hundred bucks. Uh, all right, guys, what's going on? Let's try, <laughs> let's answer some questions. All right, so right now we've got 58% of people here who are not vegan. So guys, if you're not vegan, 
uh, and you want to ask, listen, you've got three, three options here. You can, you can be kind. You can ask a normal question, right? You can ask a no nice, normal question. I'll answer you in a nice, normal way. You can, you can be a little bit arsy. You can be a little bit, you know, douchebaggy and I'll be a little bit douchebaggy back and we'll have a bit of fun with it. Or your third option is you can, can, can be a complete and utter bell end, right? And just really hardcore troll and I'll be a complete and utter bell end back to you. Um, those are your three options, non-vegans here, okay? Um, like I said, but the, the first option, if you're really nice, if you're just normal, I'll be normal back, all right? So this, is, this is your choice. And also, remember, guys, if you're going to do that, if you're going to say any of those things, put my name, David Rams, uh, otherwise I won't see it, okay? So you've got to make sure I see it. Um, I am actually here more so to answer questions and to try and, you know, because I've been vegan for 14 years, guys, all right? So I've got a lot of experience. I am actually an activist. I go out and I talk to people about animals and animal rights, uh, try to raise awareness, try to help people understand what they're paying for, because we deserve transparency and you deserve the truth. And I believe that the truth is really important. So um, that's why I do what I do. I, I, I think animals deserve to be treated better. And I think that most of the people in the world don't know what happens to animals. And as most people are against animal cruelty, I'm trying to make a better world for animals by bringing these things to everybody's attention. So I see a couple of my names popping up now. This is good. Let's have a look. Uh, okay, we got Sousa. What's up, mate? I have a question and I'm not trying to criticize, but if humans found a way to kill animals without them suffering, would you eat meat or not? No. And so it's not about the suffering, mate. It's about the violence on an innocent. Okay, so for example, if, if we found a way to go and kill humans when no human suffered and the human themselves didn't suffer and none of their family suffered and everything was no suffering, would it be okay to go kill humans? We'd say no. Why? Well, because you're going over to a human and you're doing an act of violence on an innocent human. It's wrong to do that. It's wrong. We've, that, that would be a violent world. Wouldn't say, well, they didn't suffer. Oh, but it's still violent. You're still going over with a gun and, and shoot them in the back of the head. It's still a world that we wouldn't want to live in. We, we respect the right of that human to not be shot in the head, even if they didn't suffer. No, I think we, we need to respect the right of the animal to not be shot in the head too, even if they didn't suffer. Um, actually, the best thing to do is to not breed that animal in the first place. Okay, so stop the farmers from breeding them because the farmers force them to have babies and breed them, right? So we stop that, actually. That's what we want to stop doing um, and, and stop them coming into this world and being, being you know, killed for people to eat them. There's no need for any of it. They should have the basic rights that we have, the basic rights to not be abused or killed or to have violence on us, okay? They deserve to not have any of that done to them too. The same rights that we give a baby, okay? Because babies are helpless, defenseless, vulnerable, so are animals, okay? Compared to us, we can do anything we want to an animal and, and they can't stop us, just the same as somebody can do anything they want to a baby and no one can stop them. So that baby needs protection, the animal needs protection. Thank you for the question. I appreciate it. This is the kind of good question that we could do more of, guys, because it's a nice question and uh, I'd, it's not trolling, you know, and I appreciate that you ask a good question like that. Uh, Miguel is asking one question. I've done a lot of research on myonic dystrophy. I went, I have went into all the important dietetic, dietetic associations and they say nothing on how you can be vegan with this. Miguel, uh, myonic dystrophy is not something I'm completely and utterly familiar with. Um, I do know a guy who has a degenerative disorder who is vegan and he's, he's, managing um well as best you can i mean it's a degenerative disorder so it's it's you know you have to do what you have to do but uh, i don't know a lot about myonic myotonic dystrophy um the guy that i could recommend you to is on facebook his name's anthony carbajal that's c-a-r annie could you put the link in the in the chat um, maybe you could speak with him or one of his team um i don't know if he's currently able to um, respond. I don't know his situation right now as it's, it's a, it's quite a serious condition that he has. Um, but it's a de degenerative muscular, de de a degenerative muscular disease that he is currently, uh, dealing with eating a plant-based diet. Um, if you, I mean, there are, the, I, I did a little bit of research on this earlier. I tried to do a couple of Googles as I saw a comment that brought this up, but I found some things and, um, it's something to, for sure to look into. I don't see any reason. I mean, I did find one page, that said, you know, you just have to get the right amounts of nutrition and you can still do that with plant-based food. So, but um, not something that I'm, I'm no doctor or I couldn't give you solid advice on that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, it would be irresponsible of me. It's a very serious condition. Okay. But um, the, the guy I referred you to possibly could help. And cheers for the question, guys.
Um, all right, see a couple more questions. I'll try and find them. My, uh, I'm, I'm more looking for questions from the non-vegans, guys. Sorry, vegans, but we'll 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 see how we go. I saw. I give you. Terry Regan says I saw a comment in your recent community post that said that non-vegans were not good people. What do you say to that? When it comes to animals, yes, meat eaters are not good people for animals. Okay, but that doesn't mean they're bad people. So, in my opinion, you only become a bad person when, or, or you you only become not necessarily a bad person. I don't think anyone's ever truly a bad person necessarily because we can all change, can't we? But you are currently being a bad person. If you know the truth, if you know what happens to animals and you just carry on doing the things that hurt them, knowing you could just easily do something different and not pay for all of that, then you're currently being a bad person. You're currently being bad. That, that is that is horrible. Before knowing, I don't think that, that it really is fair to say, oh, you're being a bad person. It's more a case of you didn't know. Okay, you're doing bad things to animals, but you didn't know. As soon as you know, you're currently being a bad person. All right? But you don't have to be. This is the beauty of it. We don't. You don't have to be like that forever. You can change and you can say, oh, but I'm not a bad person. I'm a good person. I believe I'm a good person. I do this work for humans. I do. I feed the homeless. I donate to cha human charities. I, I don't. I help dogs. I go to volunteer at a dog shelter. Like, I'm a good guy. Okay, well then be a good guy and be a vegan and stop funding all of these horrors that are happening to animals too. Okay, so it's it's not a it's not a black and white like good person bad person. Good people do bad things. Bad people do good things. Okay, but we can all change. This is the beauty of it. We can all change. You don't need to continue to do these bad things. I'm just pointing out now that these are bad things that are happening to animals that most people are paying for, but they, you don't have to pay for them. You don't have to be part of that horrible system. Jack Sweeney asks, what are your views on fishing within small communities that need to fish for food? So if you're talking about some community somewhere in, the, in a rural area and then they, the only option they have is to go and hunt for food, what, who am I to tell them don't hunt? Who am I to tell them, oh, you need to die? No, that's, that's not where I stand and where most people stand. Most vegans don't believe that, that people should die, right? But the, the, again, this is another thing is that the beauty of our situation is that everybody sat here in a YouTube live stream, hanging out, relaxing, making comments with, I don't know, AC, electricity. You guys have the choice to not fund all of these animal violence. You guys can make the choice to go and be a vegan, okay? Those people can't. They don't have a choice. How horrible must it be for somebody who cares about animals who doesn't want to kill animals, how horrible must it be that they have to kill animals? Can you imagine? Can you imagine how that would feel to be somebody who has been literally just, oh, I have to stab animals in the throat. I have to, I have to go and kill them. But, you know, I don't want to, right? I, I, I just, that must be horrible. So, of course, you know, but that's the thing. You, you're not in that position, okay? You're not in this uh, state of survival where you need to do it. So then why would you do it? Well, you don't need to, and if you care about animals, you shouldn't. And not even if even if you don't care about animals, it's it's pretty simple stuff. If you respect that a, a an animal or human feels pain, suffers, has a personality, has a life, has a will to live, cares for their family, right? All these things that animals have that we share with them. If you if you think that those things are worthy of treating somebody well, or at least the minimum, not hurting them good, you're in the majority of the population believes that, right? Well, then stop, stop paying for all these horrible things to be done to these animals that feel pain and suffer, just like you do, and just like your family does, just like your dog at home does, just like your cat at home does. Your dog or a cat, there's a little person in there, right? You don't hurt them because you know they feel pain. You wouldn't try and upset them because you know they feel, you wouldn't even shout at them just, you know, when we shout at our, our pets, our animals, our dogs and cats, we shout at them, they get sad and we feel guilty. So so why is it when it comes to a cow or a chicken or a pig, is the, 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 why are they not worthy of that same level of respect? Why is it for them? It's like, oh, throw them in a gas chamber and kill them. But for your dog, you won't even raise your voice because you'd feel bad and, and you feel guilty that the dog's sad. You know what I mean? These are the questions you guys need to answer. And what I'm saying, what I'd say to you, my answer to that is there is no difference between them. One of them was born into a horrible system that wants to kill them for a sandwich. And one of them was lucky to be born in a system where people see them as a friend. There is no 
difference between them that means one of them should go into a gas chamber and one of them should sit on your lap. There's no difference between them that makes that justified. There's no difference between them that makes one of them okay and one of them not okay. This, this doesn't make any bloody sense. The pig would, would, would want to be respected just as much as that dog does. The pig wants to live as much as the dog wants to live. Yathindra is asking, I want to become vegan. Can anyone tell me how much vitamin B12 supplements I should take? Depends on the supplement itself, but B12, uh, it, it's good to supplement that. By the way, if you're watching this as a meat eater, it's still good to take a B12 supplement. B12 is pretty hard to come by overall. There is B12 in meat and animal products, but guess where it comes from? It comes from supplements because the animals are also fed B12 supplements through their food and then they're killed, and then people eat them for the B12 that they could have just got through a supplement. How silly is that? So yeah, just check to check the supplement themselves. Um, usually one usually one per day or one per week, depending on how many milligrams it is. But, you know, at the end of the day, guys, as I said, I'm no bloody dietitian here. You're better off going and checking out some actual websites that deal with this. Um, just type in Google, uh, vegan B12, how much should I take? And there'll be some like doctors and actual qualified people to give you that information. I'm under no illusions here. I'm not like a some kind of qualified nutritionist dietitian. As I said, I'm the messenger, guys. I'm pointing you in the right directions. Um, and uh, I'll give you the answers on the stuff that I know for sure and solid that I'm qualified to answer. When it comes to, you know, other things like that, I can I can give you a little you know, answer and point you in the right direction to somebody who uh, who really knows the stuff and is qualified to give you that info. Um, all right, let's, let's have a look. You, you guys have been flying. Remember, guys, put my name if you have questions. Put my name if you have questions. Sousa says, I'm the son of farmers and it has always been normal for us to kill animals, but what would be the perfect situation for you to go back to eating meat? I'm not, why would I go back? Why would I eat meat? There's no need for me to go and pay anyone or to stab animals myself, to pay somebody to go and stab animals or for me to stab animals myself. I understand for you being the son of farmers and you say it's been always normal for you to kill animals, but that doesn't mean that it is a good thing to kill animals. It might be normal for you, just the same as it's normal for most of the world to pay people to stab animals, right? That doesn't, something being normal doesn't make it, a good thing, okay? There are lots of things that happened in the past that were normal that are no longer, we don't see them as normal anymore. Bad things. Like, for example, did you know, guys, not that long ago, right, really not that long ago, a wife was the husband's property. Did you know this? A woman was her husband's property. By law, property, like a thing to be owned. Did you know that? So that was normal at one point, but that's not, that doesn't, just because it was normal and legal, didn't make it okay, did it? It didn't make it right. Well, this is the same situation. If you've been killing animals your whole life, it might be normal to you, but it doesn't mean that it's right. It doesn't mean that that animal didn't suffer. It doesn't mean that that animal didn't deserve to not be killed. They deserve the right to their own life, don't they? Just the same as those women deserve the right to their own life and not to be controlled and treated as property by a man, okay? But both, that was normal. That was completely normal, legal are socially acceptable, but now it isn't. And that's a good thing, right? Well, this is the situation I'm telling you. Like, it, it, I, I think that we sh this shouldn't be normal to do all these things to animals. And it should be something that changes. We should change the way we view animals. We should stop viewing them as property and resources. We should stop viewing them as things to be used and just treated badly and abused for our own pleasure, for, our own, for a sandwich. This shouldn't be the case. We should stop this. That's what being vegan means. It's, it's rejecting that. It's stopping that, you know? Oh, here we go. Why are you comparing women to animals, mate? Guys, listen, I understand that we're moving quickly. I understand that this might be complicated uh, uh, for some people, but I'll break it down very simply, all right? To make it really simple in the best way you can imagine. In the example I gave, I wasn't comparing women to animals. I was defending women and saying that what the way women were treated in the past was wrong, that they were treated like property and it was wrong. And I also believe that treating animals like property is wrong. It's not comparing animals to women. It's talking about something that happened and something that is currently happening, both of which I am against, okay? So don't take something that is clearly in, in defense of women 
and try to make it as though I'm doing something bad to women. That's a really bad tactic to try to shoot the messenger. That is clearly not what's happening. So don't do that. Come on, guys. Be sensible here. All right. And there are tons and tons of other situations in the past that we currently don't do. Things that we've done to humans throughout history that we currently in the West are against and most of the world is now against. Humans as property is something that we are overall, all of us are against now, right? Why? Because humans have the right to their own lives, okay? Humans, no matter where they're from, what color, what creed, doesn't matter. They should not be treated badly. Why? Because we acknowledge that they have feelings and emotions. They feel pain just like us because we're all human, okay? And they deserve freedom, right? Well, animals are also vulnerable and feel pain just like us. They have their own wants and desires just like us. In all the ways that matter, we're the same. And then the ways that don't matter, like, okay, we're more intelligent, fine. Uh, in, in many ways, we're more intelligent, but in many ways they are. But anyway, we can do more with our minds, right? Fine, okay. They look different to us. Fine, okay. These things don't matter. Who cares? You'll meet humans who are very, very, very low intelligence. Doesn't mean we're going to hurt them, does it? You'll meet humans who look really different to you. Doesn't mean you're going to hurt them, does it? You see? These things don't matter at the end of the day. How they look or their intelligence, this doesn't matter. What matters is that just like us, they feel pain. They suffer, they have preferences, dislikes, likes, personalities, they care for their families. They have a lot of the things that we have, the most important things that we have, okay? That is why we shouldn't do these horrible things to them. Thank you, Dillion, for the uh, Streamlabs tips, mate. I'm just checking them now. He donated $5 and says, watching this while eating pug bacon <laughs> tastes so good. Dillion, come on, man. So Dillion's making a joke here about pug bacon. Um... And uh, the reason he's saying that pugs, you know, dogs, it's a joke, okay? Because because obviously eating pugs, dogs, people are like, that's crazy. That's crazy. People are not going to eat dogs. Come on, that's crazy. But then you ask them, okay, well, pug bacon is crazy. Of course it is, right? Why is pig bacon not crazy? What does a pig have that a pug doesn't? Or what does a pug have that means that crazy to eat them, but a pig is totally fine? Why? Why? Put these animals together. Go, go and spend time with pigs in a sanctuary and tell me what you see. You'll see incredible animals who just want to live their lives. If you learn about pigs, you'll learn, as I've said, they're sentient, which means that they have a, an experience, a subjective experience. They feel pain. They have likes and dislikes. You know, they experience the world in a very similar way to a pug. They experience the world in a very similar way to a small child, actually. So why, why pig's bacon is okay and pug bacon isn't, doesn't make any bloody sense. We shouldn't be making bacon out of either of these animals. Neither of them. We shouldn't be eating either of them. We shouldn't be killing either of them. We shouldn't be stabbing either of them in the throat and bleeding them dry so we can eat their bodies. Violence, guys. It's pure violence. I see we've got some super chats. Who is it? Is it have we got trolls or have we got supporters or a combination? Let's have a look. It's Vegan Legion. Thank you, Vegan Legion. Legend. And it's uh, Marcos Suganellis, both supporters. Now, where'd that troll go? Well, the troll was going to give us $100. Didn't do it. Uh, Marcos says, uh, please, vegan activists, help people to wake up and make a happy world for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Marcos. That's a very nice, that's a very nice super chat. Makes a little change from, from the trolls. But remember, trolls, I mean, there are currently... 60% of you here are not vegan. And obviously, I'm responding to, to some of the trolls, but, but guys... Uh, if you've got questions to ask me about veganism, about animals, we can have a normal conversation. We can be totally calm and, and, I, and I will be very reasonable with you. So please put my name in when you want to ask a question and I'll ask answer your question, okay? Or you can be a silly billy troll. That's up to you. Put my name in and we'll also answer that question. But, you know, I'd, I'd rather you were nice. I'd rather you were, you, were, you were nice and we have nice discussions here, but I understand that some of you can't, you know, some of you are not capable of that, right? But the ones who are capable, the ones who are watching on the sidelines right now, I promise you I won't be mean. I promise. You're not going to get ashamed or anything. If you're being kind and nice and asking a normal question, uh, I, I will I will answer your question. And if anyone's mean to you, I'll defend you, okay? 
You have my word. You have my word. We're not here. I'm not here to shout at people unless they're being silly. Okay. Then we'll have some fun and we'll be mean. But that's, you know, only then. Okay. Only then. See, for example, we've got a, we've got Leo here who's being silly. He says, everything you eat was made via killing animals. So what Leo's probably referring to here is the fact that crop agriculture, like growing plant food, comes with some some unfortunate death. Yeah. Because the machines that 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 take the crops up, they often can have uh, they can often kill. They can often kill animals there, the ones that don't run away, or insects and, and animals like that. Um, the farmers themselves will go out and defend crop fields. Uh, a lot of farmers will use guns and they use pesticides to defend the crop fields, right? So there is absolutely, and with life, with living, there is an element of death that you have to accept. Okay, so drive a car, you're going to end up killing animals, right? But you still drive a car because it's unavoidable. It's it's part of living, being a human. The world, unfortunately, is not built in a way where we can avoid all animal deaths, right? So this person has somewhat of a point, but that doesn't justify paying a farmer to breed animals, mutilate them, and stab them in the throat, okay? Just because it's not possible to live a life completely free of, of killing, completely free of animal death, doesn't mean you go out and kill animals, this is like saying, well, listen, you know, humans die, you know, um, humans die in, in constructing houses, humans die from driving cars, uh, humans die from all sorts of stuff. So, you know, I should just be a serial killer. Wait, what? That doesn't make any bloody sense. Because it's unavoidable that your life will negatively impact other humans that gives you a right to go out and abuse and kill humans. No, it doesn't make sense to say it doesn't make sense for animals either. Okay. All, all, all of our lives come with a certain cost. We know this. We're trying to reduce that cost. It's not a zero-sum game. It's not like you go vegan and all of a sudden every problem's solved. No. Not funding animal agriculture is one step. One step. And you can take more steps after that, right? But why would you fund animal agriculture? If you actually care about animals being killed and hurt, and you're not just using this as a gotcha to a vegan if you genuinely actually care why would you fund animal agriculture what you would do instead if you actually cared about this topic is you'd go vegan and then you would work with the vegans on the other issues that are in the world now that you're not directly funding all of this violence you go okay then so in what other ways do we harm animals through our lives oh let's talk about those things now that i'm a vegan and now that i've taken care of like the biggest reason the biggest thing the hugest thing you know and there's one more point to make as well about that, uh, about this whole kind of plant agriculture and how that also harms animals. Most plant food is grown and fed to animals. Do you know this, guys? There's around 80 billion animals a year who are bred, mutilated, and then killed. And guess what? They've got to eat. Guess what they eat? Plants. So those plants have to be grown. All right? So if you have an issue with plant food crops and how growing them can also harm environments for animals, harm their habitats and harm them, go vegan then. Because if you don't, here's crops and how many animals would like die in crop production, okay, for animals. Here's how many die in the production for humans. Okay, but then go back here, here's the animals. And then you gotta kill those animals too. So that number's off the charts. So if you actually care about animals, Eat plant-based, be a vegan. All right, we're going to jump down and see what people are saying down here. Oh, <laughs> David Rams lives, his, lives in his own utopian world. Someone called Plautus says, yeah, sure, what, what utopian world do I live in? Let's see if you can actually back up your comment and, uh, and we can see if you've got anything sensible to say. Um, where are we looking here? Uh, someone called Mordus Sukai says, I will preface this by saying I have no desire to become vegan. Uh, chickens produce hundreds of unfertile eggs in their lifetimes. There is absolutely no reason we shouldn't eat those eggs. So I don't know why you prefaced it saying you have no desire to become vegan. Um, it's a really strange thing to say. I have no desire to stop harming animals, but I'll ask you this question anyway. It's a strange thing to start with. Um, but, but yes, there is absolutely reason to not eat eggs. Because where do you think those chickens come from? They're not just in the wild existing. No, farmers breed them in the millions, actually in the billions, right? And then, do you know what they've done? They've selectively bred 
egg-laying hens, selectively bred them, so they lay upwards of 300 eggs a year. Do you know how many eggs a chicken is supposed to lay, like a wild chicken? Between 12 and 14 a year. Tell me, what do you think that does to their bodies? They're supposed to lay 12, 14 maximum, but they end up laying 300. I'll tell you what it does to their bodies. It destroys their bodies, completely ruins them. That's the reason they're laying so many eggs, selective breeding, okay? Oh, up to 300 or more potentially a year. How insane is that? Also, because of the way they're bred, they get very big very quickly and their legs buckle under the weight of their bodies, okay? Some of these chickens, I've been in many, many egg-laying farms, okay? Egg-laying hen farms. They can't walk, a lot of them. They can't move. They just sit there on the floor and die slowly. And if they don't die in the farm, as soon as their egg production starts to slow down, the farm sends them to a slaughterhouse where they're dunked in electrocuted, electrified water and then their throats are slit. So, no, there are reasons to not eat eggs. Those are the reasons to not eat eggs. Don't fund the egg industry. It's an absolute disgrace. One more little fact for you to add on to that. What do you think happens to any male chick born in the egg industry? So while they're breeding the chickens, they have males and females, right? Just like us, males and females. What do you think they do with the males? The males can't lay eggs. You might think, well, they'll probably take them to the meat farm, right? The meat chicken farm and they grow up. No, they're the wrong breed for meat. They don't use those eggs, those chickens for meat, the males. Do you know what they use them for? Nothing. They grind them up in a blender, in a massive macerator, or they drown them, or they suffocate them. These are chickens, little male chicks that have been alive for one to two minutes, and they throw them in a giant macerator, like a giant blender. Go and look on YouTube and find that out, okay? These are all reasons to not eat eggs, so look into it. <sighs> May, no, we're not going to talk about that topic. Um, what else we got? Guys, remember, I, there's a lot of comments now. You have to put my name if you want me to spot your comment, all right? It pops up for me. Uh, Mia says, I'm not vegan, but I'm interested in vegan. Well, Mia, you're in the right place, and I appreciate your honesty. Thank you for coming here. I hope you just listened to what I said about the egg industry and why that's absolutely disgusting and terrible for those animals. Um, in general... The, the reason that vegans are vegan is because just like you are most likely, we're against animal cruelty, we're against animal abuse. And that is literally what animal agriculture is. Meat, dairy, eggs, all animal products come from abusing animals, mutilating animals and killing animals. That's how it all works. The meat industry, guys, they breed animals, they use artificial insemination which if you don't know what that is, it means that they, they get these animals, they hold them still in a big metal contraption or they tie them up, okay? They shove their arms inside them and they inject them with semen, right? So some people would describe that as, I'll say the word, but I won't say it properly, grape, okay? Some people would describe that as that. I think that they've got a point. It's disgusting. That's the beginning of the life cycle when the, when the young animal is born. And they, in the meat industry, their job is to get them as big as possible, as quickly as possible. So they're slaughtered. They're slaughtered at around, depending on the animal, it can be as little as three months old. And I think the maximum you'll get out of their lifespan can be eight months old. They're babies. They kill them as babies. That's the meat industry. The egg industry, we just discussed. The dairy industry has all of that artificial insemination. And they do this repeatedly over and over, just keep getting the cow pregnant, she has the baby, get her pregnant, she has the baby, get her pregnant, she has the baby. They do this over and over again. If the baby's a male, they kill them right away, as in, well, they just separate them right away, and they'll kill them very, very, very young, because they want them for veal, which is baby, like actual calf meat, like baby cow meat, so they'll kill them very short, shortly after that. If they're a female, they'll have the same life as the mum, and as soon as the mum gives less milk, then she goes to the slaughterhouse too, where she'll be shot in the head and have her throat slit. These are the three major things that most people eat every day, meat, dairy, eggs. But obviously there's a lot of other reasons as well to be vegan. Vegan is not only the diet, it's also clothing, fur, for example. 
here's a question. Are you guys, are you guys supportive of the fur industry? Everybody in here, do you support the fur industry? As in, do you support ripping an animal's skin off to wear them in like a collar of a hood or to, or to wear a fur coat? Do you guys support that? Or for example, what about bullfighting, guys? Do you guys support bullfighting? Do you support dogfighting? Do you support cockfighting, which is fighting chickens against each other, the males? Do you support that as well? Um, what about running with the bulls over in Spain where they where they release a load of bulls um, and then at the end they kill them? Do you guys support that as well? Let's have a discussion about these things uh, and see. I, see I'm, I'm, I know there's a lot of uh, silly trolls here, but I'm actually looking for more the, the non-vegans in here who actually don't support those things and, and to you know, pop in now and, and stand up and say, why, why not? Uh, why do you not like bullfighting? Uh, why do you not like fur? Uh, wearing fur or the fur industry, for example. Um, you can pop in here and, and let us know why you don't like those things or why you think they're bad. I saw so one person say it's not apples to apples. Eric Christopher says it's not, these aren't apples to apples. Well, listen, fur industry, bullfighting industry, dogfighting industry, what is well, what are all these things? Well, these things are harming animals for what reason? Pleasure, right? Because people enjoy it. Trophy hunting, harming animals for pleasure because they enjoy it or they enjoy wearing fur, right? That's all it is, harming animals for pleasure. Which we've already established, and you know this, that eating a plant-based diet is totally fine for your health. You can be vegan and be healthy and you can live a normal life, right? So then what is that, what are you doing it for? Why are you eating meat? Why are you eating eggs? Why are you eating dairy? Pleasure. So you're harming animals for pleasure. So then how is eating a burger any different to trophy hunting? Both of them is violence to animals for pleasure. So yeah, not apples to apples identical necessarily because obviously if you're going out trophy hunting, then you're physically going and killing an animal. But if you're eating a burger, you're not physically killing the animal, but you actually removed yourself one step back and paid somebody else to do it instead for you. So realistically, though, what's the difference here? It's both killing for pleasure. And then I saw someone say, oh, this is a bad comparison. Just saying it's a bad comparison, you know, that's not a good, that's not a good point. You need to explain why you think it's a bad comparison. Otherwise, you just look a bit silly, don't you? Try and explain why it's a bad comparison here in the comments. And put my name and I'll answer you. But just simply saying, oh, it doesn't make sense. It's bad. Guys, we need to be a bit more. You need to give me more than that. You need to elaborate. Okay, because all it really sounds like, it just sounds like you don't like to hear the truth. And you're just having a reaction. If you actually have a point, pop the point in. Right, and we can, we can try and discuss it. All right, I'm back in the chat again. Let's have a look. Plautus says, uh, if humans don't kill pigs, pigs will be killed by wolves. So either way, they get killed and getting mauled by a wolf or bear is sh for sure, far, for sure much worse than being killed quick by humans. Your point would make sense if humans were going out into the wild and killing pigs. In reality, though, farmers are breeding pigs in farms in captivity by the millions, hundreds of millions, and then killing them. These pigs would never be killed by a wolf because they wouldn't exist. The farmers create them to kill them and make bacon out of them. You're not, you're not saving them from wolves. You are literally creating life to commit violent acts to them so you can have bacon. All right, Plautus? So no, that, that's not how it works at all. Again, let me reiterate that. You are not helping animals by eating meat. When you pay for meat, you're creating demand so that farmers breed more animals and stab them in the throat, all right? Um, so, yeah. Veg90 says, thanks for everything you do, David and Annie. Cheers for the super chat, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. What else we got here? I see a couple... Uh, right, I've got to see my name pop up a couple times. Um, <laughs> I got some Daniel Atalano says, I don't agree with everything. I enjoy steak. Well, you don't agree with everything, but you may you agree with something then. So that's good. We're getting somewhere. Um, and also you enjoying steak. I mean, some people enjoy hurting humans. That doesn't mean they should hurt humans, does it? You enjoying something doesn't make it a good reason to do that thing. So if you enjoy abusing animals, doesn't mean you should abuse animals because you enjoy it. Right? Enjoying something is not a good good reason to do something. Otherwise, what a horrible world we'd live in if everyone just just did what they enjoy and uh, didn't care about anybody else. That's a horrible world to live in. 
Well, that's currently the world you live in when you say, well, I enjoy steak. Well, okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you enjoy it. Get, get the same pleasure without stabbing the animal. Go eat something that's a plant-based alternative to steak. Go and find out a way you can still enjoy steak without an animal being involved. That would be a very responsible way of enjoying steak, wouldn't it? To be able to have eat a product that you love that didn't involve stabbing some poor animal in the throat, right? Remember guys, put my name. I see a lot of comments, but if you have something to say, put my name. I'm going to take a little, little chocolate soy milk break. What else we got? I see <clears throat> still 61% of people here, not vegan. It's good because we're here to have a chat and this is a, you're in the right place. Non-vegans, people, meat eaters, you're here in the right place. <laughs> Sorry, I just read something funny. Um, a guy says, uh, uh, I'm, an, I'm an 11th gen farmer and we do dairy, but when our cows get too old, we bring them to a land where they can live until they die naturally and we sell our bull calves to 4-H people. So first off, if, if you were just taking cows to a land and just dropping them off, you must have, what, hundreds of cows because cows can live to 25 years old. So you must have just a land to just hundreds of them or, or you're BSing, right? Which is highly likely that you're BSing. Um, no offense, mate. I just don't buy it for a second. And um, so you sell your bull calves to 4H people. Yeah. And then what do they do? What do they do with the calves? Right? We know what they do. They kill them eventually, maybe after a little bit. Okay. So listen, dude. We're not buying it. We're not buying what you're selling, okay? Um, or, or if you actually, I'll tell you what, if you actually want to back it up, put the name of your farm in. Give us a location of your farm and um, I'll send, so, I don't know where you are in the US, I'll send someone over. You can you could let them look around. You could take them to where you drop all of these old cows off and you could show us your herd of hundreds of cows just living old until the age of 20, 25. If you actually are telling the truth, yep, yeah, shoot us over. Shoot us that location over and we'll sort it out. As it, as it stands, though, don't buy it. Don't buy it, mate. Um, Vegan Power Lab, thanks for the uh, donation, mate. Maybe it was already said, but what exactly is the difference between a human and an animal that justifies exploiting, abusing, and slaughtering one for taste pleasure and the other not? Yeah, so so what's what's the difference? Yeah, this is somebody can answer this question in the chat. So what, yeah, what is the difference between a, a human and an animal that means you would defend humans, guys, because all of you here, let's all agree on something together right now. Do we all agree that it's that we defend humans? Do we all agree it's wrong to kill innocent humans? Do we all agree it's wrong to abuse innocent humans? Do we all agree it's wrong to do horrible things to, to other humans? And especially so to do horrible things and abuse and or kill children? We all agree on that, right? So, because, because why, children, why? Because they're vulnerable, defenseless, they can't stop us, completely innocent. So we all, we all fight to the death for a child, wouldn't we? If someone's trying to hurt a child, we put our lives on the line, right? So we're all in on that. Cool, we agree, fine. So now look at an animal, okay? Animals are also defenseless. They're also innocent. They've also done nothing wrong to anybody and they have the same understanding of the world as a child. So what exactly is the difference that makes it okay to do horrible things, horrible, violent things to an animal, but not okay to do horrible, violent things to a human? Somebody already said they're not a human. That's, that's, that's illogical. That doesn't make any sense. You could find a human, right? So you, when you say because they're not a human, so are, they're a hu you talk about DNA, right? You're saying they don't have human DNA. Is that what you're saying? So what about if there was a human who didn't have human DNA? What about if it was one of our ancestors? What about if scientists are able to bring back one of our ancestors, a Neanderthal, okay, who looks like you, right? Identical, but they're not technically, they don't have our DNA. We're not technically the same. They're technically not human. They're another species, right? Then is it okay to kill them? Uh, you probably still say no. So, so it's not the fact that they're not human because that doesn't make any sense, right? So what is it then? What is it then? What's the difference? You're not going to be able to answer the question because there isn't an answer to it. The only answers to this question are, are 
they don't make sense. Um, all right, what was that? Said so someone said, "I don't care what I what is said. I will eat meat forever." And sent me two dollars to say that. If you want to send, you know, money to say things like that, you can do it. Um, a bit silly though, Daniel. A bit of a bit of a silly thing to say. Uh, that you that you uh, you don't care what is said. Why are you here if you don't care what's being said? Are you like a this is like a professional troll actually? People trolls who pay the vegan. This is like a professional troll. That is so interesting. Rider twenty four. We already dealt with that, mate. One human, one being human, one not being human. It's not. It doesn't make sense, as I've already said, because you need to tell me what are you saying is human. Then is it DNA? What is it? And if there's if there was a human, someone who looked like a human that didn't have human DNA, you'd say, oh, we can kill them. So no, it's not that. Then is it? Right. That's a hypothetical, guys. By the way, this is a hypothetical. Try. I'm not. I'm not trying to like say that that currently exists. It's just an idea for you to think about. That if you say, oh, because animals aren't human, if right, that's the big valuable golden thing that you think is the most important. So what does that mean then? Again, is it DNA? So you're saying that if someone doesn't have the right DNA, even if they look like you, even if they act like you, if they don't have the right DNA, you would kill them because they don't have human DNA? That That's a very silly thing, isn't it? So it's not that, guys. It's not that, is it? So what is it then? You won't be able to call it out because there isn't one, guys. It's not intelligence because, like I said earlier, we don't kill humans who are low intelligence, do we? Right? You could say they look different to us. Well, we don't we don't kill humans no longer anyway who just because because they look different to us, right? We call that racism, don't we? We call that um, discrimination. So what is it then? What is it then if it's none of those things, huh? All right, what else we got going on in the chat? Remember, guys, put my name in the chat. Put my name in the chat and it will pop up for me. I'm trying to catch up. Um, uh, how about killing insects? I don't, I don't want to kill insects either. What do you mean like eating them? Protein? Vegans aren't on board with eating insects. That's a stupid movement that's happened. That's more of like a, a dumb environmentalist position. They, they are These big environmental groups, they want to push insect protein. No, don't need it. Not interested in it. Not interested in killing insects. Um... Colvinda is asking, what about having a pet cow or hen or meat and eggs? Is that cruel or irresponsible? Oh, you want a pet cow for, for or a hen for meat and eggs? Well, they're not pets if you're using them to kill them for meat or their eggs. They're, they're just resources to you. And um, that's, that's horrible. And they're not, again, they're not pets, guys, if you're doing that. Um, but if you rescue a cow or you rescue a chicken and you save their life from a factory farm, or you get them to a sanctuary, that's great. If you have land in your garden, and you have enough land to have a rescued cow there, and you want to save a cow, that's great, but don't kill them, because then you've not rescued them, you've just taken them from one person who wanted to hurt them, and you've hurt them. So, you know, it's kind of messed up. It's not kind of messed up. It is messed up. Uh, Jonathan, thank you for the super chat, mate. Jonathan says, how do you debate with someone who says, I don't care? I find it impossible to rebute that argument. You've got two choices here, mate. Um, well, you've got a few choices, but I think two main ones with somebody who says, I don't care. You either have to accept that this person is likely a psychopath or a sociopath, and they genuinely have no emotion when it comes to those who are weaker than them. And this is, they're a dangerous person if that's the case, because then that means they don't value life so you've got to be careful with that, right? That's one way. Fortunately, that is not the majority of people. The majority of people don't say, I don't care, because they have that condition. The majority of people don't fall into that category. They say, I don't care, as a defense mechanism. Um, they say, I don't care, because they're not actually listening to what you say. They say, I don't care, because they don't want to change what's going on in their life. They say, I don't care, because they're uncomfortable. And that's like I'd say 90% of people when they say I don't care, that's what they mean. It's that I don't want to change. I don't like what you're saying. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to hear this, right? Um, now people, are, <laughs> this is so funny. People are getting triggered because I said there could be a psychopath. If you notice what I said, guys, I'll repeat it again for everybody listening one more time. There are people out there who genuinely don't care about hurting others or the feelings of others. These people are by definition usually falling into 
possible psychopath, possible sociopath, or there are other conditions that make it so that they have no empathy, right? They can be dangerous people, not always, but if you've established that this is somebody who you're talking to, there's no point continuing to talk to them because you're probably not going to reach them, right? But on the other hand, most people don't fall into that category. Most people have empathy. Most people are not that, what I just said, right? I'm telling you now, most people say this is a defense mechanism. I don't care as a defense mechanism. All it is, is a reaction. It's a way of telling you to go away. I don't want to hear this anymore. You're making me feel bad. I don't like one. I don't want to change. I don't like what you're suggesting. That's what it means, right? So if it, 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 how to deal with that? How to deal with someone who's being stubborn? You can ask them, I don't know, something like, if you don't care, um, could I ask, why have you engaged in this conversation with me? Why are you here if you don't care? You know, if someone doesn't care, they won't even talk to you. People who don't care just walk on by or they just say, no, thank you and keep going. That's I don't care. That's, that's when you really don't care. But if you stop and talk and try and defend yourself, it means you do care. Of course it does. You actually care because that's why you're standing here defending yourself because there's something that's something that's bothering you and you want to try to argue because you care, right? So I would ask them possibly, what do you care about? What do you care about then? Like what's important to you? Most people would say, well, humans are important to me. Humans, actually, I care about humans. You care about humans. And why exactly? What, what do you care about humans and what is it you care about? And they'll say, well, maybe I'll give you some examples of some human rights stuff they care about. Maybe they want to help the homeless. Maybe they want to help people starving, you know, the countries, right? So you've established there, they have some empathy, so that's good. And then you could ask, okay, so what, what's the reason you have empathy for those people? Oh, because I feel bad for them suffering and I feel this and I feel that. And then you can bring it back and say, well, the same reason that you care about humans, I also do, by the way, I care about these people, I care about this suffering, but for the same reasons you care about them, I care about animals, right? Because in all the things you just said, it's not fair, they suffer and animals have the same problems, it's not fair on them. They suffer. They feel pain, just like those humans do. So you're starting to, do you now understand that we, we, we actually share that? We share that empathy. It's just you limit yours to humans, and but I open mine up to animals too. Is that so wrong? And why, why would you not open your empathy? Why would you not open your circle of empathy a little bit more to others that are also suffering? And you don't even have to do anything, guys. This is the thing, guys. When you're a human rights person, if you if you want to focus on helping the, uh, the, like, uh, the homeless or whatever, all that's being asked of you is to do that while not funding animal abuse. That's it. Being a vegan is simply not funding animal abuse. That's all it is. It's just that you take your money away. You don't have to be some activist. You don't have to go out and shout on the rooftops. You just take your money out of those industries, right? So that's all that's being asked here. So you can carry on with all of the things you care about more while also not funding all of these horrors and all this violence to animals. That's it. So that's how that's how I, in a, in a perfect world, would answer that question. I think, to be honest with you, though, most of the time when I come up against somebody who is just being very stubborn and they won't answer questions and they won't talk and they just keep saying, I don't, I don't care, I just walk away. Because at the end of the day, for every one person that's like that and that's truly horrible and truly stubborn, there are 20 who will have a nice, normal conversation with you and they'll have an inch and they might disagree with you. They might end up being stubborn, but they'll at least have a conversation. And that's most people. One in every 20 is, is like, just, I don't care or whatever. So it's up to you how you deal with them. Monster's asking me, am I a Christian believer? I'd probably cl classify myself as um, a, a non-theistic Christian. Uh, basically, I don't believe in a God, but I do absolutely believe in the teachings of Jesus and and uh, Jesus as a person and what he taught. And I'm quite passionate about that. Um, so I don't know how that works for the Christians here. I don't know if that makes me a, a, some kind of enemy or something like that, but um, I don't see myself as your enemy. I think we have a lot in common. Um, and I do my best to follow the footsteps of Jesus. So yeah. Um, Dobrik, sorry about the, I missed your super chats, bro. Um, what's your go-to response for the circle of life, though, is asking me. So for those that don't know, um, there is a a common thing people say to vegans, guys. Common thing people say to vegans. They say, but David, but vegan, it's the circle of life. It's the circle of life, right? I mean, it's just nature. It's how things are. 
I'm going to break down why that is not a good thing to say. I'm going to break down why that doesn't make sense. Okay. So if someone genuinely believes that the circle of life, nature is a good thing and we shouldn't go against it. And it's, you know, that's the be all, that's the ultimate reason to just do things. It's the circle of life, kill animals because it's the circle of life, right? Well, then you'd also have to accept that malaria is part of the circle of life. You know, malaria, it's a, it's a disease, a virus that comes from mosquitoes that kills people, right? You'd have to accept that that's part of the circle of life. Don't treat it. Don't try and change it. Okay. And um, what about like the, uh, the plague? Remember the plague wiped out like huge chunks of the population back in the day, like some hundreds of years ago. Yeah. Um, this horrible, horrible disease, natural, perfectly natural. Do you know what else is natural? Part of the circle of life, cancer, part of the circle of life, natural, natural, you know, these things, pff, we shouldn't do anything about them. It's a circle of life. It's natural. Now, obviously this is dumb. No one believes we shouldn't do something about these things because these things are things that, yes, they're natural. Yes, they're part of the circle of life. Yeah, but we don't want them to be anymore. So what do we do? We create medicine. We teach people how to live. We teach people how to wash hands, all these things to stop the spread of disease. And we try and treat diseases and we try and treat very serious ones, too. Um, we're looking for the cure for cancer. We're looking to stop it, despite that it being natural. It's a natural thing. We try and stop malaria you know, the thing that comes from mosquitoes that kills people. We try and stop that spread. We try and stop that from happening, but it's natural. Okay. So the idea of like the circle of life, natural, well, it doesn't, it's not a good, it's not a good reason to do something, is it? It's not a good reason to keep killing animals because it's natural or the circle of life. Right. So that's, that's why it's a silly point. Okay. That's what I would explain. So that, that's how I usually explain this. And, um, just think about all the things that humans do that could be called natural. Punching, making a fist and punching someone in the face. Perfectly natural. You can make a fist. So if you can do it, why not just do it? Well, because it's natural, but that's not something, that's not a reason to do something. You can't just go and be violent to another person because it's natural to do so, right? Well, why are you trying to say be violent to an animal because it's natural to do so? So something being natural doesn't automatically make it good. And again, I'll repeat this one more time for the people that don't seem to understand. Saying an argument isn't good, like you guys are now saying, some people are saying in the comments, this is bad, this is bad. Without saying why it's bad, you're just making yourself look like an idiot, okay? Actually say why you think this is bad or don't say anything, all right? Because I've explained to you why I think the argument is bad. Now you've got to explain why you think my, my point is bad. You see, that's how it works, right? I've told you with my explanation. Now you explain why you don't like what I've said and we can keep on doing this, right? It's all good. It's all good. Mordesakai says the circle of life includes self-defense against disease. Mm, no, it doesn't though, because self-defense against disease is denying the circle of life. If you actually believed in the circle of life, you would allow things to take place as they as they do. But no, we're using technology. We're using technology to prevent things. We're preventing the natural order of things. When you get a disease, right, your body fights it off or you die. But you're giving yourself drugs and treatment to support your body. So you're actually saying, no, we don't want natural. We want artificial because it makes us live longer. We want air conditioning instead of heat being too hot or too cold and dying from the heat or the cold, right? We want paracetamol instead of dying of a fever. These are all things that we put in place to stop nature from killing us and hurting us, okay? So nature, nature though, oh, it's good because it's natural. Well, no, obviously not. In the rest of your life, you don't believe that. So why do you believe it here for killing animals? Well, because you want to eat animals. That's the reason you're saying this, not because you believe this just because you want to eat animals. Well, it doesn't work. It's a bad reason to be violent to animals. You can live and be perfectly healthy. You can live a good life as a vegan without being violent to animals. It's simple stuff, guys. If you care about animals, if you care about, if you care about injustice, if you don't believe it's okay to go and have a, an animal tortured, abused, then that be a vegan. That, that's simple. That's a simple simpleness of it. 
you know? For example, and if you don't care about animals, still do it. Because at the end of the day, if you, if there's someone on the other side of the world, some human you don't care about, you've never met them, don't care about them, you still wouldn't pay for them to be tortured and killed, right? Even if they were evil, if they did some evil stuff, you still wouldn't pay for them to be, to be tortured and killed. So why are you paying for animals to be tortured and killed? They've done nothing wrong. They're completely innocent, as innocent as a child, but you're paying for them to be tortured and killed. Why? All right, guys, put my name if you have questions, remember. Vincent asks me, are you in favor of artificial meat growing, meat grown from cells? It's like cell-based meat, lab-based meat. So how it works with lab meat or cell-based meats where they do it in a lab, you've got the slaughterhouse here, which is blood, guts, feces, urine, animals terrified, being shot in the head, gassed to death, stabbed in the throat. You've got all that, and then the animal products come from that meat. Or on this side, you've got a clean lab, and it produces meat as well, and it's like identical, okay? Why would, in this situation where you have choice, why would you choose the violence, the blood, the guts, the feces and urine when you could just choose a clean lab. Now, I understand most people are being put off by lab meat because it sounds scary. Oh, it's a laboratory. Oh, it's cell meat. Oh, it sounds weird. Yeah, I get it. I get it. It does sound weird, right? But still, it's not as weird as what happens in a slaughterhouse. As I said, animals in their own feces and urine screaming while someone shoots them in the head and then stabs them in the neck, right? Of these two situations, I think most normal people, most average people who are not trolling would say the clean lab is preferable to get meat from, okay? So for me personally, I probably won't eat the lab meat. I don't think I'll, I'm ever going to really eat any animal flesh from now on. It's personal preference, but obviously it's good for everybody out there who wants that, that they can get meat without the violence to animals. That's a very good thing, isn't it? Uh, oh, so this uh, this Reese Sanderson thinks he's got a, thinks he's got a good point. Um, doesn't realize we already answered this earlier on, but he says, come on, darling, answer me. How many insects die for your travel to get you your vegan stuff? How many pesticides are used to kill all those pest animals for your vegan stuff? Yeah, Reese, uh, you've not got anything, mate. We discussed this earlier, but I'll discuss it again. I'll make it quicker this time. So here on this side, this is this is the hand here. Here you've got all of the animals killed in crop production for plants, okay? For animal feed, for 80 billion animals. And here you've got the deaths in crop production for human feed, human, human food, plant, plants for humans, right? There's a lot more here because there's a lot more animals, 80 billion, there's only 8 billion humans. Then guess what you gotta do with these animals? Once you fed them, you kill them too. So that number's all the way up here. And again, we're talking 80 billion plus. Some, some estimates put it into the trillions when you include fish. So again, we're down here now. If you want to have the least impact on animals, then you'll be a vegan. You'll be plant-based because that's here. I just saw somebody say, this guy's disingenuous. Explain why I'm disingenuous. See, every time I've called one of you guys out here so far, every time I've called one of you out and said, when you say this argument is bad, this doesn't make sense. You're disingenuous. Every time I've said to you, explain why, you disappear. So actually explain, actually explain what's disingenuous. Explain what what's bad about the argument. And then I'll respond. This is how a discussion happens. But if you just keep on making statements, and you, again, you're not actually making a point. You're just being silly, okay? Um, apparently I've missed a comment. I don't know. Um, you guys are saying I've missed a comment. You put my name and I'll do my best to, to, to come back to it. Reese is now saying, so it's okay to kill for your plants, but not for meat eaters. I explained the situation. I'll do it one more time for you, Reese. Okay. Life on earth comes with a cost. We all, there's a cost of living here, right? Animals are going to be affected by you living here. And yes, animals are going to die by just by you existing. Okay. That doesn't mean you go out and pay farmers to breed and mutilate and kill animals in the billions because you can't be perfect, right? That doesn't give you... That's just like saying, oh, my existence, I know driving a car 
and all these other things that I do, people building houses, blah, blah, blah. There are human injuries and there are humans that get hurt from me living, right? So therefore, I'm going to be a serial killer. Doesn't make sense, mate, okay? Doesn't make sense. Yeah, again, um, it's getting a bit, it's getting a bit silly now. Again, guys, I'll say this one more time as well. If you think something I've said is silly or dumb or you don't like it or you think it makes no sense, you've got to explain why you don't think it makes sense. You've got to explain that. Otherwise, you have no point. You just, you just ranting and uh, you you just empty. You just emptiness. Okay. Because there's no, there's no point there. You just say, I don't agree. With what? What do you not agree with and why? Explain. Yeah. Um, Ben's now saying, you could grow all your own food, though, and reduce harm. Buying from Sainsbury's is a cop-out. Ben, no. Growing your own food is not feasible for the vast majority of people. People don't own land, and land is very expensive to own, Right? There is a world, though, there is a world that we can create where growing food has a very minimal impact on the rest of, on the animals, right? That world could exist, but it's not going to exist until people stop paying for animals to be abused. You can't expect that people are all going to go, hey guys, you know what? We should come together and we should do our best to, to not impact the insects and the rabbits and, you know, let's do our best with the crops and the plant foods, right? They're not going to do that while they still want bacon in the morning, while they still pay somebody to stab a pig in the throat, in the billions of them, 80 billion minimum a year, okay? So one has to come before the other. There is a world where if animal agriculture no longer exists, then you can start to focus on plant agriculture and the improvements that can be made there. But until that, until plant animal agriculture has been dealt with, then, then you have to move on to plant agriculture, okay? You're not going to get one before the other. That would be like saying, uh, hey, um, oh, like we need to, there is this, some serial killer oh, and just absolutely going out, just absolutely going for it. Um, but before we get to that, we need to work on workers' conditions because people have bad working conditions and some of them are dying from the bad working conditions. So let's figure out the working conditions and we'll just let, while we're doing that, we'll let the serial killer just absolutely go large. It's like, no, we have a priority here. The priority is the killer. The priority is the animals that are bred, mutilated and killed. There's no way anything else will change until that changes. All right. Um, yeah. Guys, keep on putting my name in and I'll try and find your... Uh, <laughs> what? You just admitted you care more about animals than humans. Ah, oh, God. You guys are, are very silly. That's not been said in this entire stream. But if you can find me a timestamp where it was said, then uh, go and go and find it. And then you can pop it in and uh, you tell everybody where I said that. But I didn't say that, so... Oh, it's hard to explain a position with a 200 character limit, especially when you're able to free flow your consciousness and jump from topic to topic. Yeah, fair enough. But you could still give it a go, couldn't you? A lot of people here aren't even trying to type out what their problem is. They're just telling me they have a problem. Um, Estin is asking, how do you respond to, have you heard of the food chain? Estin, it's the same response as I gave earlier to when people say it's a circle of life. The food chain and the circle of life mean the same thing. They're both basically people saying that if it's natural, it's good. That's all they're saying. If it's natural, it's good. But that's not true, is it? If it, it's not natural, it's, it's not always good because it's natural. It's not always natural if it's good, right? For example, we went through earlier, malaria, cancer. These things aren't natural. Dying of a fever. Sorry, these things are natural. Dying of fever is natural. But we stop these things. We take medicine. We, we do preventative measures. We wash our hands. We wash our bodies to prevent us getting any kind of diseases and stuff like that. Um, we use chemicals, new manufactured chemicals, manufactured drugs. We have all these machines in hospitals, all completely and utterly unnatural to stop the things from happening to us that are natural. There are people who are trying to prevent the, uh, for example, um, senility, you know, like when people go senile, when they get older and, and they get Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and other degenerative issues in the brain um, that, are, that are associated with old age a lot of the time. Well, that's natural, but we're trying to stop that as well, aren't we? Right? We're trying to stop that too, because even though it's natural, we don't want what's natural. We want what's good for us. So uh, people hold two standards here. For, for when they eat, they say, oh, we have to do what's natural. And killing animals is our nature. 
And then on the other hand, they're like, I take paracetamol when I have a fever so I don't die. <laughs> and I don't care that it's not natural. So the people don't care about what's natural. They only care about what they what's good for them. And unfortunately, when it comes to animals, what makes them happy or makes them feel good is terrible for animals and it's violence. And that's why that's why we're being vegan. All right. 62% of people here are not vegan. Let's try and move away from the silly billies who are trolling and let's answer some normal questions. So guys, do we have some normal questions in here? Let's try and give a focus. I'm happy to wait a little bit this time for anyone who's been watching, who wants to ask a normal question, a sensible question, instead of the silly billies that we've been responding to so far, okay? Happy to wait a little bit and give you time. Remember to put my name there, please, guys. Put my name there. I can spot it a lot easier. Weavers asks me, how long have you been vegan for? Thank you, Weavers, for a normal question. I've been vegan for about 14 years. I think it was possibly 15 years now. And actually, I was, I was born and, and raised as a vegetarian. So that proves to you that a lot of people think you need meat. They say, you need meat. You absolutely need meat. Um, but that's not true, obviously. I'm six foot two tall. Uh, which is about 185 centimeters, I think. I don't know if you're if you're in centimeters or not, guys. Um, currently, I'm weighing in about I think probably about 90 kilos, just under 90 kilos. Um, been training a lot, you know, all this all this stuff. Uh, and then this is yeah, I've been vegan for like 14 14 years, turning 15 soon, and um, vegetarian a lifetime basically. Cheers for the question. Um, Annie's asking, I want to hear what is your response to craving meat? Well, asking, do I crave meat? No, I've, I've, I was raised not eating meat. So there's no craving of meat. What I do crave though, I, I, I crave like, I'm a big fan of like vegan meats, <laughs> like vegan burgers and stuff like that. But that's just junk food. I like junk food. That's the stuff I crave, like vegan junk food. But yeah. Um... <laughs> Funny questions. Ryder24 asks, why don't you live and let live? That is ironic coming from people who literally live and kill. You live and kill animals. Like you live and fund people. You pay people to kill animals for you. And you ask me, why don't I live and let live? The thing is, I do live and let live, by the way, because I'm not physically grabbing anybody. I'm not hitting anybody. I'm not stabbing anybody for not eat, for, for not being vegan. I'm sat on my own YouTube channel doing a live stream. This is me living and let, letting live. I'm just trying to convince people to make a different change in their lives. I'm trying to convince people who have empathy for animals to do something good for animals. Um, What's a uh, vegan power labs asking? What would you recommend to a person that is thinking of being vegan but thinks it's hard to change the diet? I would say to them, you are not wrong. There are difficulties in life, and changing your habit is one of those difficulties, right? When you get a new job, it's difficult. When you get a new house, it's difficult. You have to get all the new, I don't know, you figure all your stuff out. It's uncomfortable. Change is uncomfortable. So, of course, change is hard. But we don't not move house because it's hard. We don't not take a new job because it's hard. Or we don't we don't not go to college because it's hard. We say, yeah, I know it's going to be hard, but it's worth it. I like the new house. I like the new job. I like my new college, right? So I'm going to do it. And my degree is important, so I'm going to do it, right? So this is no different. Of course, changing your entire habit and your system and what you eat, of course, it's going to be a challenge, a big change for you. But that's okay. Give it a couple of weeks, especially after a couple of months. And it won't be difficult anymore and it won't be a challenge anymore because you'll have done it and you're used to it and everything's fine. So that's all I'd say. It is worth doing it, absolutely worth doing it. And it might be a bit finicky at first, figuring it out. Maybe you could you, you go, and go and go on challenge22.com. Challenge22.com, guys, you get some free support to help you with it. Uh, you could use Chronometer, which is a great free app to track your nutrition, make sure you're all good, make sure you're all set. But after a couple of weeks, you'll be fine. You'll be flying. You'll feel fine. You'll feel just the same way you did before. It's not like you're going to have a miraculous 
improvement of health or anything like that. That's not how it works. You'll be the same as you were before, maybe better, you'll be fine. And the most important thing is that you'll no longer be funding an, an incredibly violent system anymore. You'll be out of it. And that's awesome. So it's worth it. You'll no longer be funding people who gas animals to death and stab them. You'll no longer be funding people who shove their arms inside animals, take their babies away from them. You'll no longer be paying for any of that. <clears throat> Um, okay, so I'll answer this question as, as I'll assume it's not a troll. Johnny Scranton says, if man isn't meant to eat meat, then explain why we have eyes affixed to the front of the head and canines. And what about the vitamins and nutrients from meat? Johnny, if, if man isn't meant to go around just punching whoever he wants, then please explain why I can form a fist that's very strong and I can hit really hard with it. Um, you know, it's it's this idea of meant to do this because of the of a biological thing we can do, like a phys or a physiological thing we can do. That's what it's meant for. No, it's it's not. We're not we're not in that boat. It's not how it works. Um, it's not how it has to work anyway. And as for canines, come on, bro. Let's let let's not really canines. You think those little things in your mouth are for tearing into the flesh of animals? Even if they were, even if even if you were right, let's pretend you were completely right, okay? Our eyes are here and our canines are all designed to be just hunters, just the same as a lion. Let's imagine you're correct. The reality of our situation is we can get all of our vitamins and all of our nutrients from plant-based sources. We can do it. It's being done, right? And the science backs it. So it's all good. We can do it. So even if you were right, even if the teeth were for that, even if the eyes were for that, it doesn't matter. We don't need to do it. We can choose a different path. Just the same way that, for example, genetics play a big part in your personality. Did you know that? You, you, your genetics play a big part in the kind of person you're going to be. Now let's imagine, let's imagine that you have a genetic predisposition to violence. Let's imagine that you were born and your personality because of your genetics, is violent, right? And you know this. Say you get a test and, and it proves that. It says, hey, look, your personality, according to your genes, is that you'll be a violent person, right? You don't have to go out and be a violent person just because your genetics say that that's most likely where you're going to be. You can say, do you know what? I'm aware of that, but I don't want to be a violent person. So I'm going to fight against that. I'm going to, I'm going to choose a different path. I'm not going to allow my biology to determine the kind of person I'm going to be. This is no different. So even if you believe you're biologically designed to be some kind of violent animal killer, that doesn't mean you have to go out and violently kill animals or pay people to do it. You can choose another path. You can choose a path that isn't violent. You can choose a path that doesn't support all those horrible systems. That's the path I think we should all be choosing. Pyro the Morning Star asks, why is it no difference in cancer rate between vegans and meat eaters? I don't know why you're asking that. Um, I'm not claiming that the plant-based diet and the vegan diet is going to miraculously stop you from getting cancer. I've never said that. That's not my thing. Um, but saying that anyway, you do have a higher risk of getting cancer when you're consuming more animal products. Um but um, yeah, I don't have the answer to that question, but that's not something I claim anyway. Um, being vegan is not about your personal health. All you need to know is that you can be as healthy as you want to be eating plant-based. If you want to be super healthy, you can be super healthy. If you want to be junk food, sitting around on your ass all day, you can do that too. That's up to you. But you can get all the nutrition you need to be at the top level if you want to. Uh, that's up to you. <sighs> um, Estin asks, what was it like when you first ate plant-based meat? Well, my first uh, try of plant-based meat was back in, I don't know, a long time ago, a very long time ago. And um, back then it wasn't very good. So I would have to, like with these uh, plant-based burgers, I would just like put loads of ketchup on them, put them in a bun, and then just, um, you know, to try and take the, make it taste better. But that was, that was like back in, I was like, I don't know, 
it must have been about 14 years ago, probably 13, 14 years ago, where I first tried the plant-based meat and things weren't very good back then. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> um, vegan cheese was also very bad back then, but these days everything's a lot better. The plant-based meats are a lot better. The vegan cheeses are a lot better. I mean, the thing is, it's also subjective. Everybody has their own opinion on what tastes good, what tastes bad, right? So when you become a vegan and you start eating this new food, this new vegan food, some stuff that I like, you won't like, and some stuff that you like, I won't like. That's just, you know, preference. So you're going to have to go out, try all the different foods, see the ones that you like, the ones you don't like, and, and build yourself a new way of eating that suits you. Uh, with the flavors that you like more and the flavors you like less and, and all that stuff. It's quite, I, I know a lot of vegans really enjoy this when they first go vegan because actually it's like rediscovering food because they, they go through the whole stages of, you know, replacing the stuff they used to like with stuff now that is uh, vegan and trying to figure out what tastes the best to them. And yeah. Um, I think we already, yeah, Troy, we already spoke about lab-based meat. But basically, my view on lab-based meat is if you can get animal flesh without the, you know, the feces, the urine, the violence, the blood, the guts, the fear, the terror, why would you not? Uh, as, as, a, as a meat eater, why would you not choose the lab-based option? For me personally, I probably won't eat it because I'm just not interested, to be honest with you. And um, as far as it goes for the ethical side of things... Um, I know that they're, they are using some animals and some of these processes. Eventually, uh, they won't do that, obviously. But I personally am not. Um, I, I suppose I don't. I'm not like advocating for it. I don't like. I'm not, I'm not out there being like, yeah, let's go lab based meat. But it is the future, and I think it's going to replace the animal agriculture industries. It will replace farms. It will replace slaughterhouses, and obviously, um, that's a good thing, isn't it? It's obviously a good thing. Oi, um, still looking through your comments, guys. <laughs> I, um, yeah, cool. Remember, guys, remember, I, I'm still waiting for more kind of normal questions. Uh, so, you know, try to ask some normal stuff, some stuff you really want an answer to as opposed to any trolling stuff. Okay, guys, and put my name and I'll, I'll do my best to get to you. I think most people here currently are not vegan. So you guys who have been hanging out in the background, not saying anything, now's the time to jump in. Ask a question. Okay. What's this one here? Oh, Reese is now saying, like I said, herbivores eat meat to survive just the same when they need the protein when other food can't be found. We are animals just like the rest. Reese. Animals doing what they need to do to survive is not the same as you sitting at home on YouTube live chat with access to Tesco and whatever kind of supermarket you have nearby. Survival situations are not the same as having choice, unlimited choice practically, and choosing violence. People do lots of things in survival situations. People eat humans in survival situations. They kill humans in survival situations. They do... They drink their own urine in survival situations. This is not a survival situation that we're in now. Um, so I don't know why you keep bringing up survival situations. It's, it's a bit unusual. Um, Stop Ben Chipping donated one dollar and says, how do you respond to Ben Chipping's claim that freeganism reduces harm more and is therefore more ethical than veganism? Let's shut this argument down. Freeganism. So you're talking about what people who dive in bins and stuff like that. If if someone wants to go and dive in bins and eat out of bins, um, I mean, what's to say about that? I mean, it's not it's not a sustainable way of living, obviously, um, for multiple reasons. I mean, just practically, a lot of places lock their bins for one. So you, well, you're just going to starve if you can't get in the bin. Um, but I do think there's an argument to be said, like about there are some places, for example, in Germany, where they have these situations where they at the end of a day, like if they're going to throw stuff out, they put it on this app and then you can go and get the food really cheap. I think that's an amazing system. And you're still buying, you're still there's still supply and demand, you're still paying for the food and you're still supporting the business. Um, but you can get food at a massively reduced rate because they would throw it out otherwise. I think that's something that the world needs to change. 
I think that's something that we absolutely have to bring that in. I think that's a really good thing to do. But the idea that what well, that freeganism reduces harm more and is more ethical than veganism. So the, you've, you've mistaken what veganism is. It's not about reducing harm. We are for stopping seeing animals as products and things to be bought and sold, used and abused. We are for having animals have the same basic rights as humans have, the rights to not be stabbed, the rights to not be bred and mutilated for products, right? So freegans, although in like a practical sense, they're definitely not as bad for the world as someone who goes in there and buys all these products, fine, but they're still part of the system. They're still part of this thing that's saying that animals are products. They are still, it's not, they're not taking an ethical position. They've just taken a more practical position, right? So they're looking at things as a, as like a kind of, I guess, utilitarian. They're thinking, well, you know, if it's doing less damage, then it's better. But that's not necessarily the case, right? So, yeah, there's my answer to that. Um, personally, I'm not going to be a freegan. I'm not going to go and eat the dead bodies of animals because it's free. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I don't think that these animals... I don't support the killing of these animals. I don't think, I don't see animals as products. I don't see animals as food. And I'm trying to bring about a new way of seeing animals, I'm trying to connect people with their empathy for animals. And that does not involve eating them or eating the things that come out of them that came from abusing them. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't make sense. Um, he's saying, and he's saying now freegans grow their own food. Again, we went through that already earlier on. It's impractical um, for the world to grow their own food. You're not going to have the entire world growing their own food. It's not possible. It's not a feasible system. It's not a sustainable system. What we need is plant agricultural systems that feed the world with the minimal impact as possible on animal habitats and animal lives. That's a world we can get to. But before we even get to even starting that world, we've got to change the consciousness around animals, stop viewing animals as resources, Stop funding systems that breed them, mutilate them, and kill them. Stop okaying that and normalizing that. And then one day after we're dead, long dead, hopefully this world of plant-based agricultural systems exists where people actually focus on doing the least damage to the planet, the least damage to habitats, and the least damage to animals. But again, we're not going to get there while people literally stab animals in the throat for a burger and they say it's normal. You know, we're never going to get to that world while that's happening. So this is why the focus is here, as we explained earlier. Um, Mark J, thank you for the super chat, mate. It says, superb commentary. Any intelligent person should be able to recognize the physiological differences between humans and true carnivores. You would think so, Mark. Cheers, mate, for the super chat. You would think so. But obviously, when it comes to someone wanting to eat steak, um, a lot of logic goes out the window because they just really want to eat steak. You know what I mean? And um, it's all about desires. It's all about what they want and how they feel versus the reality of the situations. This is where you'll end up with people saying things like plants have feelings. Um, what about lions? Why I'm just like a lion. Why can't I kill animals eat animals? We have canine teeth. My eyes are facing forward. Therefore, I'm a predator and I can do what I want. This all comes up as a complete defense mechanism to just try to defend violence to animals for things they like to eat, basically. That's pretty much how it goes. <clears throat> Guys, uh, do, me, do, do me a favor and remember to put my name when you have a question. We're still waiting for, for more sensible questions. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm, not gonna, I'm probably going to give a little break from answering silly questions because um, obviously it doesn't seem to be getting through. People like making excuses, Montag, that is true. Shep, so Stacey B, what's up? How's it going? Um, <clears throat> what else we got in here? So this, um, oh, this is a uh, relatively um, normal question from, from this. Mordesu Kai, you've, I think you've been relatively reasonable today. So I'll answer this question. Hypothetically, if a new study came out and said that plants had emotions and didn't want to die, would your empathy extend to plants? So hypothetically, if a new study did come out that said that, in that world where this had happened, 
it would be, still be obvious that if there was a scale of how much an animal is feeling or how much a plant is feeling, we'd know that plants would be the bottom of the scale, right? No one would be claiming that a, that even though, okay, let's imagine they imagine that a broccoli does have emotions and doesn't want to die, it would still not be the case that the broccoli has the same emotions and the same level of understanding and the same pain and the same all these as a pig, for example, right? So we still have to eat and we know some something has to die, someone or something has to die for us to live. This is something we have to acknowledge, okay? If it turned out that broccoli had feelings and didn't want to die, we'd have to eat something, we'd have to eat the broccoli, wouldn't we? And that's just something we'd have to suck up. If it was different plants, different plant foods had different and some plant foods didn't feel, but some did, then obviously we'd, we'd make the switch to only eat the ones that don't feel if the studies proved that. It would depend on what this study, hypothetical study proved, right? But of course you would pivot and you would, as, as more information comes out, you would change up the way you live. Uh, but again, so if it turned out that all plants have feelings, all of them have feelings, you'd still eat the plants because the alternative is death, right? You still eat plants. Or if they somehow came up with a way of doing um, lab cell plants, cell-based plants that didn't involve the plant having emotions and stuff, then we'd eat that, right? But it, it, it's you would, you would adapt. You'd have to figure it out. It's a nice, it's an interesting hypothetical. Um, as I said, you've been reasonable, so I figured I'd answer it. It's, it's a fun thought experiment, right? Not to be taken seriously, guys. It's just, uh, it's just, yeah, so someone said hypotheticals like these are so dumb. It's dumb, but it's just a silly, it's just a bit of fun, that's all. It's just thinking about, like, oh, what would happen? As it has, as it happens, as it stands right now, obviously, plants have no reason to have, a biological reason or evolutionary reason to have feelings and emotions and things like that, because they are in one place. They cannot escape. There's no reason for them to feel pain. There's no reason for them to have, like, a conscious experience in the same way an animal does, because... They can't escape. It would just be torture, right? So you, that that study, that hypothetical, will, will not come to fruition, fortunately, because it's not just, just not the case. <sighs> what else we got? What else we got? Marky's vlogs says I'm a vegetarian. Interesting, Marky. Could you let us know why you're a vegetarian? What inspired you to become a vegetarian? And uh, also. If you want to let us know and have a, we can have a chat, um, why not vegan? Why not uh, go all the way and remove yourself from all these industries that harm animals? Um, especially if you're a vegetarian because you're against killing. Dairy and eggs also kills animals. They all end up at the same slaughterhouse, mate. So, um, Mark, you let us know, man. This is all, by the way, no judgment, mate. No judgment. Just trying to... Uh, start a conversation, understand where you're coming from. Put my name in again as well, and I'll, and I'll make sure to follow up with you. <laughs> so people's opinions are silly, but yours aren't. No, I have silly opinions sometimes too, um, but no one today has been able to tell me why they think I'm being silly. They just call me names. But I've explained money multiple times when people have said silly things, why I think it's silly, and I think I've done a reasonably good job of that. So... <laughs> Where is your proof that you don't eat meat? No, you got me there. Can't prove it. Bloody hell. Ah, oh, God, it's just this. I'm just a big liar, aren't I? I just, I do all this channel. Uh, I, I make a YouTube channel about veganism, the thing that no one likes, and that is really difficult <laughs> to, like, get people to follow and subscribe, and really difficult to have any success in the field of making content, making videos about animals. Um, I do all of that and, and, but secretly I eat meat. Yeah, that good, good theory there, bro. <laughs> oh, funny. Um, Miguel's asking, if you want pigs to stop being in gas chambers, why don't you pass the investigation to the Guardian or any other UK press to inform people? Miguel, if you just Google UK news gas chamber, you will see that it has been passed to the press and they have covered the, the investigations, they've they've covered it multiple times. Um, the UK press has already spoken about this, spoken about free-range pig farming, which also has been exposed recently. So, yeah, already have. Cheers for the uh, advice. Uh, so... <laughs> 
my god. <laughs> this is a funny question. My question is, if you'd rather eat your own dead parents that just passed away, or have someone kill and serve you a shrimp or a fish, if it's all about sentience, then I guess you choose your parents. No, actually, I wouldn't do either. Because, hey, look, we can all create very silly hypotheticals all day, right? It doesn't mean anything when it's as silly as this. So, no, I, I choose in this hypothetical you've created, I choose neither. I choose to, to not eat my recently deceased parents or shrimps. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. All right, so... Yeah, that's a really funny one. You're right, Mama Dibble. That's a good one. And now, oh, and now people are upset because I won't answer the hypothetical. You see, no, hypotheticals, they have a purpose. And the purpose is usually to figure out something important about someone's ethical system. You know my ethical system. You know what I think. We don't need to create a hypothetical where I would would I rather eat my dead parents or an animal or, or a shrimp or an animal. It's done. All you need to know is that I that that's a hypothetical that's useless. It doesn't teach you anything, right? When we, when I create a hypothetical, I think the only one I've done today. I haven't done any today actually. Oh, I did one. I did one today about when somebody said the reason they will eat animals but not eat humans is because animals aren't human, which is a nonsensical reason because then i asked them what then is it that makes somebody human is it just dna is that what you mean so if a human was born with some kind of bad dna but they were still human like to look at but they had non-human dna then you could eat them see that's a hypothetical that makes sense isn't it? you know because there is a possibility that there could be someday especially with, with the future of technology cloning and stuff like that there could be people who are born, who look like you, act like you, human, but don't have human DNA. Is that what it means to be human? If not, what does it mean to be human? And why is that the defining factor that means you'll kill someone or not kill someone? Can't answer the question. Uh, what was it someone said earlier on? Hold up. I missed uh, some, some point. Was it where it go? Where did it go? One of you guys said something interesting. Uh, I don't know where it went. Hey, thank you, Prokyon. Appreciate it. Says, David, you're inspirational. Thanks for all you do. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Do my best. Um, someone's like, a Apex Nate is asking, what's your max deadlift? Um, I don't deadlift. I used to. And then I looked into that kind of cost-benefit ratio of it and decided not to bother with it because, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I know, I know it's a good lift, but my lower back is, is a bit shot. And I think I need to do some more mobility training before I get back into deadlifts. Um, my max bench press, uh, I got like 100 kilos for two. Um, but that was a while back, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I've not been training too consistently. So I don't squat. I don't squat either um, because same reason. My lower back's just not so good, honestly. I think I, I sit too long. You know, I sit like this fucking like, like we're doing today for too long. And my lower back's just weak. I need to strengthen it up. But once it's once it's like strong again, once I've got my mobility sorted and, and I've actually... Because I've got tight, a tight lower back and I've got tight hamstrings and tight um, calves. And I think it's all kind of screwing with my squats. But I do, I do leg press and I do bench and I do, you know, um, shoulder press and uh, I do weighted pull-ups as well. So, yeah. But, um, but yeah... But yeah, 100, 100 kilos was, was not bad. I mean, that's my my biggest. Still still going to go, keep going back to the gym, trying to get bigger. Obviously trying to get stronger and bigger. So yeah. Um, What else is going on here? <laughs> Kuzi says, uh, you look so weak because you are vegan. No, that's true. 100 kilos is, is a really, it's not a lot of weight on a bench press that. That's like, everyone can do that, you know. So um, Chip says, yeah, you need meat protein. Yeah, I clearly need meat protein. Like I said, 100 kilos is... No, it's not, is it? 100 kilos is just not it, guys. You know, something like... I think it's like less than like 1% of, of uh, men in the USA can bench press 100 kilos. But but no, I mean, I need I need meat, obviously. Yeah. 
Yes. Mayron Deer says, I see a Periphery shirt. What is some of your go-to bands? Well, Periphery are one of my favorite bands, as you can see from the t-shirt. Also big into Architects as well. And uh, yeah, I like metalcore stuff. I'm big into metalcore stuff. That's my like, it's my genre that I go to the most. Um, Apex Nate, you can overhead press 100 kilos. Nice, dude. I think my top overhead press is like currently like, I think it was like 55 or 60, I think I managed to do. But I've never actually done a one rep max on my ov overhead. I'm, I'm quite new to lifting. So, I mean, I've been on and off, but like I'm, I'm new to like really properly lifting, you know, devoted lifting. It's still a new thing for me. So I'm still learning. Oh, Ben's into Bring Me The Horizon. Nice, dude. Yeah, Bring Me The Horizon is sick. Big fan of those guys as well. I like, I like the new stuff combining more like of the different elements and different genres and stuff like that. Cool. Oh, we got into a music discussion. That's good. And we're also, we're all, <laughs> when we don't talk about veganism, we see how much we have in common, guys. This is something I find interesting, you know, because you guys might have uh, not realized this, but, but let me tell you something. I think this is really important to know, to, to, especially everybody who's been arguing with me and we've had a bit of a back and forth and stuff, right? Um, so, so, yeah, I'm a vegan and you're not. And on that topic, we we, we can argue all day and, and I can talk about everything I've spoken about. You talk about what you talk about, right? But the thing is, when it comes down to like who we are as people, we have more in common with each other than you will ever have in common with the people who own these businesses that kill animals. Because the thing is, right, we're talking about, we're talking about, like you're saying, like Ben's saying now, like we're talking about eating habits, we're talking about violence to animals, we're talking about protein or whatever, B12 and all these things. A big reason that you guys think you need to eat meat for protein, calcium, milk for calcium, that you think veganism is not right or unhealthy or something, a big reason you think all of that is because people who have billions of dollars, who have literally become millionaires, billionaires, off the back of selling you meat, dairy, eggs, and other animal products, they spend hundreds of millions in advertising every year to try to convince you to keep on buying the products that you're buying, right? They, they literally have entire units, entire teams, where they're literally devoted to trying to make you keep on doing what you do, okay? And I'm talking about this as in literally, recently there was a, there's been, a guy's been exposed um, as somebody who worked for the tobacco industry. He's also worked um, against organizations who were trying to bring in new drink driving rules. So there was an organization trying to get the, uh, the drink limit lower, as in like, so you can't drink as much and drive. He worked against them, okay? This guy runs a, an agency who goes out there and tries to stop good things from being done in the world, and he makes a lot of money from it. He works for the meat industry as well. He works for the anti-vegan animal agriculture marketing. And th this is his entire job is to make people question and confuse people. The meat industry and the animal agriculture industries, they've been getting these people, hiring these people and working with them for the last 40, 50 years. These people are millionaires and billionaires. You and I are far more in common with each other than you have with them. Yet you're now in my live stream defending those people. I'm here because I want you to see through that BS to get to the truth and stop funding those people who all they want is your money. I don't want your money. I'm not here to make money from you. Like you've sent me, some of you guys have sent money for some reason, but that's not why I'm here. I've not asked for money, right? I'm here to talk to you and try and help you make a connection for animals because I care about animals and I think it's wrong what's happening. I think it's wrong that these billionaires are able to manipulate and lie to the public to make them pay for gas chambers that torture pigs, to make them pay for animals to have their throats slit, to make them think they need to do this. They make you think you need to pay for all of this or they just hide that from you and tell you it's all humane and it's all lovely and these animals are treated well, it's all lies. And they spend millions and millions of dollars trying to make you believe the lies. So again, why would you be here in my live chat defending those people who don't care about your health? They don't care about you. They don't, they just want your money because they want to buy their next mansion, the next Rolls Royce, the next Ferrari. That's all they want from you. And you're sat here doing that for them. You're sat here saying, I'm going to keep on paying their salaries. Why? 
Why? They don't care about animals. They don't care about you. I care about both. That's why I'm here. I'm not a millionaire. I'm not a billionaire. Me doing this job here, sitting, talking to you, will never, ever make me a millionaire. Ever. It barely even pays for my life as it is. Barely. Okay? I'm never going to get rich from doing this. This is not a business that I can... It's not a business, full stop. I can't live with this, with this, what I'm doing now. I need help. I need support from people who believe in what I do because this is not a system. <laughs> but I'm here anyway because I care, right? They just want your money to line their pockets. Again, they don't care about you. They don't care about animals. So when you're talking to me here, when you think about this, like I'm a vegan, right? But like I said, we're on the same boat. We probably like the same music. We probably want to, we have the same problems, we have families we care about. We have we have so much in common, right? We have so much more in common with each other than you do with the people that you're defending right now. The millionaires and the billionaires who just profit from all of the lies that they've been telling you over the last 50 years. Or telling you, telling your parents, telling your grandparents, you know? So just try and remember that, right? It's important. Um, Reese, why are you not giving you shit? We are just humans. Stop calling us murderers when we aren't. We are just going through life. We have different opinions and we don't need forcing to eat vegan. Reese, I have not said the word murderer or murder until just now in this stream. I have not called anyone a murderer and I have not used the word murder. We've been streaming now for two hours and I have not said it once. People watching this on the replay, you can go back you can run a transcript, go all, load up the transcript and search for the word murder. You will not find it once. So I don't know what you're talking about. You're arguing with me about something I've never said. I've never called you murderers. I've never said that. I've said good people can do bad things and you can be currently a bad person. You can be being a bad person right now, but that doesn't have to be the case. You can change. You don't have to do bad things to animals. That's simple. That's as simple as it is. You can change. That's all I've said. If you're currently knowingly harming animals, you're currently being a bad person. That doesn't mean I think you are fundamentally just a terrible person forever. No. We've all done bad things. We've all been bad people at one point in our lives. But when we, when we become aware, we change and we try to be a better person, don't we? If we don't try to become a better person, then we're being bad. And why would we want to do that? That's all I've said. That's the most I've gone in terms of saying what somebody is or isn't, but I never use the word murder or murderer. So, um, yeah, so, oh my God, like this, this guy is spamming over and over again. Um, so I'll answer this question, Johnny, but after this, mate, stop the spamming. I'm not going to answer any more questions from you after this, but I'm only answering it because it's such a silly thing that you're saying, in my opinion. As a type 1 diabetic, been on a carniv carnivore diet for almost a year and have never felt better, as well as not having to take meds. Should I go back to high sugar fruits and carb heavy veggies? Johnny, you're on an elimination diet, which means that you've eliminated foods that may have been causing you some problems in the past. You could have had the same results from eating, possibly eating like a potatoes only diet. You could have had similar results from many elimination diets. That doesn't mean elimination diets are meant for a short period of time. They're not supposed to be something that you continue forever, okay? Some people call them detox diets, whatever, okay? So yeah, sure, maybe you feel good now. Um, I don't know what to tell you. What, what, what do you want? I'm not here to talk about diets and health. I'm here to talk about animals and what is ethical and how I don't agree with violence to animals. If you can achieve a good feeling by not funding violence to animals, why wouldn't you do that? Why would you not explore and look for a way to feel good without paying people to stab animals in the throat? And again, your elimination diet will not last forever anyway. If you try and make it last forever, you're going to make yourself unhealthy and sick. The people who claim that they've been doing it for 20 odd years, blah, 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 like the, the main people that you're referring to, for example, if you were going to refer to someone, Dr. Sean Baker, the carnivore, he, he's one of the founders or whatever of the carnivore diet. He went on record recently and said he does not know for sure the long term effects of this diet and whether it's healthy or not. That's a doctor who basically created this way of eating who doesn't even know 
if it's if it's good long term. He said that. He's shown his blood results over the, over the years, and his blood results have shown his testosterone at the same level as like a ninety year old man. He's having issues, and there are other people who are having issues eating that way. Now I am not a dietitian or a nutritionist, so I can't comment on why they're having those issues or whatever. But I'm telling you, if you actually care, why not look for another way to eat that doesn't involve violence to animals that also gets you the kind of results that you want? You see, now this person's, you know, this is why there's no point answering these people. Now this person's in the comments being like, oh, cope, LMAO. If you need to listen to the answers, if you want an answer to the question, you have to listen to the answer. It's simple. I gave you an answer. And you don't like the answer, so now you're having a paddy in the comments, having a little temper tantrum like a child. You know, what, what, what am I to do with that? You know what I mean? You don't like the answer, you don't like the answer. But, you know, be mature about it and maybe explain what you don't like about the answer. Then I can respond back to you and we can elaborate on it. But if it's just crying in the comments, then what am I supposed to do with that? You know what I'm saying? <sighs> See, it's, it's interesting because my, my running theory about people who troll has always been that they're very immature, childish people and um, probably actually children in a lot of cases. And today, for those who've been watching you who've not been trolling, I think we can all agree, meat eater or vegan, that that's correct. Because every time I've responded to a troll and I've actually given them a good answer, they've had a tantrum in the comments and acted like a child without actually responding to what I said or actually showing they've even listened to what I said. And actually, it like proves the theory, doesn't it? It's interesting. These live streams have been good, if not only for that, is to, to, to more firmly understand the kind of mentality of a troll, you know, of somebody who comes here to, to, to get upset. Um, it's really interesting. It's like, a, it's like a little social experiment, if anything, right? Jaden, this is about violence against animals. That's what we've been talking about the whole time. And that we're against violence, violence to animals. It's what we're all about. Um, what are we looking at now? All right, you guys. I don't see any more um, questions right now. But I will say a big thank you to everybody who's got involved, including the trolls. Because at the end of the day, you know, I give you guys a hard time, but whatever. You ask questions, I answer your questions. Um, hang around the channel, trolls especially. Subscribe, guys. Because... Hey, the last thing you want to do is is uh, miss the next time that I go live. I mean, you never want to miss an, an opportunity to troll, right? So make sure that you uh, subscribe, turn the notifications on so you can make sure you get a notification when, when you can come here and do some hating. If you are a vegan or you're vegan curious and, and not a troll, just being, uh, you know, just here to have a chat and be nice. Um, also, you know, subscribe, notifications on. I do these semi-regularly. I think I'm going to try and do these kind of streams. Uh every couple of days, maybe something like that. Um, so yeah, if you want to be here, subscribe, notifications on, you won't miss them then. I enjoyed it. Thanks for everybody who supported, sent through some super chats and some Streamlabs tips, especially to the trolls who did it, who used the super chat to say mean things. That was a new thing. Again, that's a new thing for me. That's never happened before, but uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, trolls. And um, I'll see you all in the next one, guys. Catch you later.